Hey all, happy new moon in Gemini. These readings are for all of us. I am going to do 12 in this one recording. So um, yeah, this, this session will have a reading for each of the 12 signs. And of course the intention is to illuminate what this new moon in Gemini has to offer us each of us but first I want to pull just uh, quickly three cards for the collective just to get a feel for what this is about in general for all of us this new moon energy we've got the knight of pentacles in reverse now what has come through for me so far while shuffling and meditating with the deck is um, this idea uh, of us being at the beginning of the end of something um, right around the Gemini full moon, which of course, or new moon, sorry, I hope I don't say full moon a whole bunch. Um, but of course, that can shake out differently for each of us as these general readings always can. Um, some are dealing with um, insecurities and anxieties specifically around um, finances, money, material matters. And um, there's a lack mindset and a need to wait for something to come to a fruition in that sense that is is coming to an end, is coming to a completion um, one way or the other. But there's also an emphasis around choice around this new moon. Um, so if you're one of those that are choosing, um, thinking about and, and maybe possibly choosing to give up on a project, scrap a project, start over with a project, or try something different because it's taking too long to produce rewards, money, fruit. Um, we want to just keep in mind that that is a very impactful decision that's going to continue to ripple out for years to come, a lifetime to come possibly. We're in a space of being able to use our free will with these decisions to either stick with it, wait it out, have faith, uh, which I feel a lot of us are being guided to do, or um, as I said, scrap a project. Um, but we want to remember what we're passionate about. Um, the Ace of Wands, the Ace of Fire keeps coming through. So we want to remember what drove us and motivated to begin what we're, we're thinking of scrapping um, and make sure that we're moving on to something that we're equally as passionate about, that we have just as much of, uh, of a drive for, uh, if that's the decision we're going to make. Because I do think, like I said, it's going to be very impactful and affect us all for a while. Now we've got two Aces reversed, and that is the feeling that I'm getting Um this this affirms a feeling that I'm getting that this choice to scrap something around this time could effectively be us keeping ourselves from manifesting something that we've been trying for for a while. You have to use your own discernment. Some of you will have been waiting on a partner or, or, or specifically um, finances, resources, something of a material matter for far too long at this point. Um, but I think most of us, what keeps coming through for the collective for me is that we really need to rethink, meditate on whether or not we wanna stick with something that we're thinking of totally scrapping. If it's a partnership, I'm getting more of a feeling um, around this Gemini new moon coming through for the collective. Again, I'm getting more of a, a feeling of um, things coming to an end that must. Uh, lengthy entanglements, contracts, bonds, um, coming to coming to a close that have to. But in that, within encompassed within that, in, in, contracts and bonds coming to an end. I feel like karmic contracts and and bonds and ties on us personally as individual even outside of a relationship are what's coming to an end and that lack mindset are is beginning to come to an end for a lot of people um in whatever area of your life it, it's 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 uh concerning that it's been affecting in a, in a negative way in a way that's not beneficial to you um that's that's what i see beginning to come to an end it's not quite a time for completion 
uh, and resolution, but we're seeing the beginning of the end, maybe seeing the light at the end of the tunnel for some, and, and for some, maybe not. Maybe scrapping a project because you don't see the light, but getting a message here that you really do need to have faith if you've already invested a lot of time or energy and it's just not giving back yet. It may be a matter of your own creative expression being suppressed a little bit um, rather than it being anything you can blame on an outside force, the planets, the divine, the chaos, another person, etc. right? It may really be uh, our own creative expression being stifled a bit and um, and yeah, there's just this really strong message coming through to stick with it, especially when I see two aces in reverse here. Because um, ones on my table are, are telling me that manifestation is coming into um, thoughts. Oh, and there's the third one. And there's the third one. Interesting. So um, there was an ace of swords right underneath this ace of cups. So we've got the ace of water, earth, and air. All, all showing up. Um, and yeah, it, emotionally, um, emotionally and physically, there's some blockage happening in terms of manifesting something. And, and, and from the messages I got before, something we've been trying for for a while. But part of what's blocking us is that we're trying to make things happen too quickly. We're trying to move up in our respective fields, relationships, uh, something too, we're trying to make it come to fruition too quickly, uh, which can be very frustrating to hear if you feel like I've been waiting forever. But there's just definitely been a message all over my table today about weighing your options carefully. If you're going to decide to scrap something that you've put a lot of time, energy, investment into in general over uh, you know a, a, a while, a long time period to you, you know, relative to you, then just go into meditation. If you if you are gonna make that decision to scrap the the practice or um, to scrap the project, then practice uh, solemn contemplation, meditating in solitude, all on your own, and make sure um, that it's not gonna be a decision. Try as your best, you know, to make sure it's not gonna be a decision you're gonna regret in the future. Because I see so many indications of. This is your choice. This is your choice of direction. This is you shaping your destiny by making this choice. So for some, it's going to be a positive thing. You're shaping your destiny by making the choice to let something go that's not working, that it's been taking too long. But I still urge that space of meditation. Let that idea to scrap something entirely incubate in your mind for a while without any influence or opinions or comments from anyone else. Just on your own. Just listen to your own inner wisdom, your own inner guide, your own intuition. Um, and, and, and see forward. Let yourself see forward. Where is that going to take you if you say no to this now? If you say, I'm done with waiting for this now? Because there's so much energy here about being patient with our passions. Being patient with our passions. There is a time of pause. There is a time where not much progress is happening. But... It is the beginning of the end of something one way or another, whether we scrap it or we stick with it and we see here in the next month or so that it's a good thing we did because we were about to scrap it right before it was going to give us what we wanted. Um, yeah, manifestation, it looks like is just blocked emotionally and physically. It looks like your mind is wrapped around it. Um, right where it needs to be. You know what you want. You think you know how to get what you want. Um, you feel, as far as your manifestations pra manifestation practices, that mentally you have it all on lockdown. You know what you're doing and the cards would agree. Um, but let's let you take a look at them with me and maybe we'll pull a couple clarifiers. I'm actually not sure that I even need clarifiers on this since it, this is just for the collective and won't resonate with everybody in any way. But in general... Like I said, we need to be patient with our passions. We're trying to make it happen too quickly. Maybe trying to move up at our job, our work, um, in someone's good graces too quickly, trying to rush it. Uh, there's something happening here uh, where more time is needed. Now, it may feel frustrating, like I said, but the, the message that's coming through and, and my indications on how to interpret and relay it to the best of my abilities to you is is that there's 
there's just a need for more time. You need to be patient with this passion. You need to use this time. We need to use this time of pause and slow progress to make plans, um, to um, exercise our determination, to let it show uh, that we believe that this thing is on the way or we're on our way to it or we're on our way to meeting it, right? Uh, this is a time for that. This is a time for patience. Patience with whatever it is that we're passionate about and growing frustrated with. Um, and I see, I see very clearly here that it's, 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 it's the emotional aspect of your manifestation that's blocking you. I mean, if your manifestation does not work the same exact way for each and every individual, but if you are feeling frustration, um, then you certainly aren't emitting an emotional vibe that matches the frequency you want to be in ultimately, right? So overall, that's what's coming through for the collective for most of us is that we need to tame this desire to rush our passion projects. And we could be talking about relationships, um, et cetera. Um, and I think for a lot of us, it's because the coin, the money, the material, uh, wealth, rewards, fruits, uh, income isn't, isn't showing up. Um, but it's, it's, it's different for everyone. That's just something I keep, I keep getting when, when shuffling and meditating with these cards. I think that's what we're trying to tame across the table, across the board. Um, that's something that can kind of connect all these readings is that we're all looking to tame that desire to rush something along that really just needs our patience. It really just needs more time. Um, it's a matter of, like I said, manifesting with your emotions as well as your mind, tempering them when need be, tempering that frustration, right? Um, besting that desire to slide back into a lack mindset or... Um, Sorry, ads. Um, uh, tempering, yeah, tempering that desire to slide back into a lack mindset or a victim mentality where we, again, as I said earlier, try to blame outside forces. And it could be people, it could be um, whatever is beyond the veil for you. But that, that temptation to, to look for a culprit when perhaps it's just, it's our own emotions, it's our own need to express. This is, this is you know, open sharing an opportunity for open sharing and an opportunity for new love that 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 kind of open sharing brings true happiness that that kind of love brings right and it's just blocked is what's coming through here it's just blocked and there's a need to temper the desire to look outside of ourselves for the answer to the question that that brings about right so we'll move on to doing individual signs now that we're almost 15 minutes in. I think I'm going to start with uh, Gemini's. Hi again, Gemini's. Let's see what the energy of your new moon is bringing in for you, has to offer you. We are just going to do a quick three card pull for each of the signs, Gemini's, and I am using the Deviant Moon Tarot, Two of Cups, for your reading today. If you're interested in this deck or any of the decks that I use in Lunatics Tarot readings, just scroll down to the description box. All your information is there. There's information about the, the uh, copyright free music that you hear as well. There's a playlist there for you. You've got the sun in reverse, Gemini's. This is about your new moon. So we'll see what comes out for us. And then if I'm, uh, if I'm not satisfied with these three cards, uh, we will pull some clarifiers. I do intend to let you take a look at them with me though, Gems. So I really feel like as you're coming into the energy of this new moon, um, and during your season, unfortunately, uh, something is uh, blocking your joy, Gemini's. Something is, is perhaps blocking clarity in your life as well. 
in some way, shape, or form, um, some some of you feel that you're not able to express yourself completely authentically at this time, and sometimes we have good reason why we're stifling a certain part, why we don't want to share a certain part of us with a certain someone or the world at large. And then you've got the chariot card reversed as well. So because of this lack of clarity, or as I said, it could be a lack of joy, lack of authenticity, all the above. Um, right around this, this new moon and maybe even moving forward a little bit with that energy still, there's a lack of forward movement for you. There's a feeling of, 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 there's a feeling of being stuck, but what just came through for the collective, um, I did a reading at the beginning of this recording, Gems, so if you jumped right to the timestamp for Geminis, um, you may want to go back and listen to the reading for the collective, I mean, it is your, your new moon, um, but in that reading for the collective, I talked a lot about how it, it may feel like progress is slow, even stagnant, um, non-existent, you know, um, but this is really, um, what I think that these readings in general are going to be about today for this new moon energy on my table anyway, is about being patient with your passions. So you may be feeling, feeling stuck, but the, the collective reading talked about how in this time of pause and stillness, we need to meditate about our decisions. We need to focus on planning, on staying uh, determined. I think we will draw a couple of clarifiers for you, Gem, since it's your new moon. And then you have the star. So ultimately, yeah, that really does... That really does confirm what came through for the collective and and a card that talks specifically about passion projects on the bottom of the deck for me the page of wands certainly does so yeah you've got you've got something black blocking um joy authenticity clarity as you move into this new moon energy you've got a feeling of of, of stuckness stillness uh maybe even a lack of confidence and, and possibly because you can't see where you, you're going or you don't feel like you have all the information about a person or situation that's heavy on your heart and mind, right? Um, but that feeling coming through for what what's, defines this new moon energy for you. Um, so some of you really um, possibly missing a Leo, possibly missing a Cancer, we'll throw that out there, um, and possibly um, dealing with an Aquarius. We have all of those energies here, but we've also got all the fire signs. I I see it more as a message of though you have come into this energy, into the space of the new moon energy with a lack of, of joy, clarity, or, and or authenticity, and though you feel stuck, ultimately this, this wish is being granted. Also, ultimately prayers are being heard and responded to. Uh, the divine, the spirit of nature itself, um, or whatever it is that grounds and anchors you beyond the veil is is working with you, is granting um, passage, is is helping to water things that you maybe don't have the energy or like we just said, confidence to, to water at this time. That's definitely with the chariot and the sun back to back reverse together, there's definitely a lack of confidence for gems coming through, which is not what I expected to see for you in your season, I guess in general, but let's um, pull those clarifiers. I do see this turning out beautifully for you, though, Gemini's, because of the star card here. Um, and that may, this I don't feel will be until after, let me close that door real quick. But yeah, ultimately, um, ultimately with that star card, I see, I see, like I said, prayers, wishes being answered and really a lot of you answering your own, you know, you're feeling this lack of confidence, feeling this lack of energy, maybe as we said, lack of joy, that's certainly a lack of authenticity all told. Um, but this is about a passion project of yours, something you feel very passionate toward and, and your need to be yes, creative as what, as, as, 
uh, as that is what came through for the collective message for me, but also innovative and very resourceful in how you move forward because it's not only about what you have to offer the passion project it's what you it's about what you have to offer yourself to keep you working on it you know the the passion project in itself is one thing yes um the double card coming through for you as well on that star card interesting 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 well, now I need clarifiers on the others. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. So for some of you, I keep saying passion project. It's both. It's a passion project and um, needing to put energy into someone you felt or feel passionately about, right? Um so this lack of clarity, lack of joy, lack of authenticity for you specifically, Gems, may very well have to do with a partner that you're needing to walk away from. Or if not a partner, just bad habits in general, um, addictions in general, whether you consider them mild or, or more. Interesting, interesting, interesting. Yeah, this Ace of Fire wants to keep coming through for the collective too and for you. This isn't the first time I've tried to record your reading gems. So we're just going to say passion project. It may specifically be about a person and you'll know if that's what applies to you gems. But I see this being all about something something you feel very passionate about. But like I said, you need to be innovative with it. You need to um, put your energy, um, put your the spirited version of yourself, the, the fiery, hot version of yourself that's ready to act and, and ready to act quickly um, and, and ready to um, really, at this point, change your plan of attack in an instant. Um, that's the version of yourself that this passion project is in need of. I think... For some gems specifically, just as you, you realize that you needed to walk away from someone or something, maybe an old pattern or habit, maybe a person, you also have had an inspiration of what to spend your time on instead. So maybe a project, a passion project that was already in the works, or maybe a brand new inspiration, a brand new uh, passion to fill the void from someone or something else leaving, right? Uh, but there's still this sadness or lack of energy or just lack of confidence, authenticity, clarity, again, all the above that comes along with it uh, as you have an opportunity to water this seed of passion and inspiration and an indication here that you, you should be focused on that, that new passion project. Um, this lack of confidence here um, can absolutely uh, cause someone to be too low energy to work on the passion project. So for Gem specifically, being patient with your passion project at this time may just mean being patient with yourself. You may feel joyless, you may feel without confidence and low energy, but that's because you're in the process of walking away from something that was likely very toxic for you, harmful to you. Um, and if not, if it wasn't all of that, then it, it, um, it certainly wasn't helping you to reach the epitome of yourself, wasn't helping you to be your healthiest version, right? Uh, and that's what you need rejuvenated from is that addiction, that that uh, that which you have felt chained to, that habit, that pattern, uh, that toxicity is what you need rejuvenated from. And when I see the star card, I do feel like the divine may greatly help you in this endeavor, Gemini's. Um, but it's also uh, a person here, a character here who knows the key to uh, rejuvenating themselves, right? Um, and, and I think can definitely be for some of you as the star card can always be an indication to check into your astrology, um, 
if you feel particularly particularly pulled to the subject matter in general or to a certain part of your chart that you're curious about um, this can seem like a simple tip but maybe the next time that you're curious about a particular part of your chart check into it on your own rather than looking for your favorite reader or even your favorite astrologer just sort of go to astro.com or even just google to get started um, and 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 you will, will, of course, later, if you know nothing about astrology, sort of check yourself against your favorite astrologers. But just go about answering the question for yourself rather than looking uh, for someone else to. Not every time, but let's say just one question. Um, for instance, it may have been, what does this new moon in Gemini uh, have in store for me? And you could have, you know, uh, gone and looked at your chart to see... Um, and it depends what kind of Geminian you are as you check this reading, right? But to see where all Gemini is in your chart, to see what Gemini, um, Gemini's ruler Mercury is doing today, which I can tell you it is in Gemini as well. The sun, the moon, and Mercury, all three are there as we do these readings. But, um, you know, just a, this is just an indication that you may be interested in watching the stars, watching the sky, watching your own astrology. So even if you're a complete amateur, amateur, just beginning by checking on a particular thing that you would normally go for someone else to. And, and I'm not saying not to go to your favorite reader or astrologer, but just check and see what you think it means for you first, right? Just start dabbling in it that way if it calls to you, if that's something that's been on your mind. But as I said, when I see the star card, I see wishes coming true and, and prayers being answered in terms of the divine, um, the divine gifting us, the divine guiding us, um, replenishing us really right replenishing us with the, the needed confidence and energy uh, and maybe even joy and inspiration to be authentic that has been missing but it, it truly is beautiful a beautiful indication that the reason you're feeling stuck now is because you had so much passion for someone or something once upon a time and so it's taken the joy from you or it's scaring you to try to move forward with this passion project. It's making you want to blame external forces for why it's not coming to fruition quickly enough. Be patient with yourself. Be patient with the passion project. Be patient with all your passions and be patient with yourself as you try to move on past something that you have done the work to recognize is not healthy for you. If you haven't, then that's going to be your gift from the divine because someone is being found out here. The truth is coming to light about someone who is being found out. And, and with sevens beginning to show up here, I feel like the divine also wants to say to you, congratulations, keep going, right? Um, it's, it's just a matter of pushing forward through this stuck energy at this point and, and, and without pushing, okay, that was the wrong word, by being patient with yourself through this time period um, and patient with your passions and patient with the person who needs to execute uh, anything that needs to be executed in regards to those passions, with, which is, is, is likely solely you. So you've got this, this gift on the table where someone is is being shown for who they really are some of you that's why you're coming into this new moon period feeling a lack of joy and energy because this person has been found out already and, and it's it's hurting you um it's just keeping your your vibration low right but for others of you if you haven't seen um If you haven't seen what's holding you back, what's keeping you stuck, and I think you have, because currently, it, you know, you're walk, you're already walking away from something, which is exactly what's making you feel stuck. You're walking away, away from this this person or this toxic habit, addiction, but that's where all your energy is going. So you just don't have a lot of energy or confidence left for whatever other passion project you'd rather be focusing on. That what, that frankly, it feels like the divine would rather you be focusing on. Um, but if you haven't, it for some, if you haven't seen quite yet, then I think that's a big part of your gift, as I said, moving forward from the divine is this acknowledgement of what it is that's been keeping you stuck. And I do think it'll come still in the form of someone being revealed. And if not someone, then, then something that's stilling your time, right? 
Um, but this is this is the gift of something toxic being unearthed. And it may be painful and difficult and challenging and put you in low energy at first to, to find out what has to be left behind. But ultimately, like I said, it's so beautiful. You're headed toward this, this wish being granted toward the divine, helping to rejuvenate you, helping to illuminate the truths that may be blocked. That's because that's the other way to read this is you just may be coming into this new moon period without clarity on, on, on what needs, what or who needs to be walked away from, what or who is, is keeping you stuck. And, 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 and in that case, then the star reads directly to me as an indication that the divine is going to help to illuminate that, that blockage, whatever's being stuck, what you need to walk away from. And I really think it's all in order to fuel a passion project that was divinely inspired and now it's being divinely guided forward. So again, definitely check out that message for the collective if you haven't yet, uh, Gems, um, at the beginning of the recording, if you skipped right to, to your reading, as I definitely feel like um, it's connected. I think it's connected. It'll probably be connected to most of these readings for all of us. Um, but with that, um, I love you. I'll post another reading for you soon. Don't feel boxed in by anything we laid here on the table today. Thank you for all of your support, Gems. And I will move on now to Cancers. Hi, Cancers. Let's see what the new moon in Gemini our new moon, our new moon of May 2019, of course, has in store for you. You could be a cancer of any kind coming to this reading. Uh, moon, sun, moon, uh, rising, Venus, Mars, or whatever it is that calls to you. Maybe it's your midheaven, your north node, or something in the title that brought you to the reading. Really, if your intuition tells you it's the reading for you, it's the reading for you. I'm using the Game of Thrones tarot for us today, Cancers. Okay. Geminis. Cancers. <laughs> I'm actually not going to take those because I just forgot who I was reading for right as they fell out. So, Cancers at the Gemini New Moon. Cancerians, Crabs at May 2019's New Moon and Gemini. Five of Pentacles reversed. We are just doing a quick three card spread for you today, Cancerians. And if I'm not satisfied with the messages that come through, then we will um, look at some clarifiers as well. And I have every intention of flipping these cards around and letting you see the images, letting you look at them with me. Okay, Seven of Pentacles, Six of Spears, and Seven of Swords. So we've got Earth, Fire, and Air. And another Fire card, Seven of Spears, Wands, Rods in this deck on the bottom of the deck, Cancers. Cancers, Cancers, I apologize for calling you Geminis. I had to pause there to get a bite of peanuts. <laughs> and I lost track of where I was. Um, This really jives with the message that came through for the collective as well. So I'm going to say, Cancers, if you skipped right to the timestamp for Cancers, you may want to go back to the beginning of the reading and look at the message for the collective. I feel like it's going to connect to all the other readings, and I'm not going to repeat the whole reading every time. Um, I don't have I don't have time to, to repeat the message every time. Um, plus, I'm probably forgetting parts of it as I go along. But we see victory currently as this new moon energy envelops you. This new moon and gem is a victory for you. For us, I should say, Cancers. I hope that resonates for me as well. And I think it's a lot about 
listening to our intuition overall and standing up for what we believe in, Cancers. A lot of us have been seeing some gains in the very recent past as we've been moving into this Gemini in new moon energy. Gains in time, money, resources in general, material things, earthly um, possessions in general, uh, gains in uh, having having time and energy for things those are, are that's earthly wealth to me that is a a physical earthly wealth to me even though we normally say the coins are talking about things that are tangible <clears throat> this physical ves vessel excuse me peanuts this physical vessel needs a certain energy to fuel it because it is a physical vessel, right? Time is a human and earthly construct. So that's what those things are for me. And I have no idea why I was called to expand on that in this particular moment. Perhaps your time and energy and money are, are wrapped up, certainly your energy and money, your energy and your time are wrapped up in ways that you can't quite see just like you can't quite see these yet but where you're headed is with the seven of swords reversed i feel uh someone who's been sneaky um dishonest um has has possibly gone to the extreme uh, for some of, of be betraying us ultimately is being exposed let's let's go ahead and draw a couple clarifiers okay so Cancers, I think I told you we were using the Game of Thrones tarot to get started. I'm now using the Radiant Rider Weight to draw a few clarifiers for you. Let's look at the Five of Pentacles in reverse. Let's see um, an elaboration on these gains. Ooh, gaining and, and possibly because we are becoming the boss, some of you... Uh, focusing on your own business or being the authority figure in your home, a relationship. Uh, being that boss, being that authority figure, being the leader in your life, your work in some way is leading, has led to, I, I should say, these gains that I think you're already coming into the energy of the new moon with. Uh, either that or it's a masculine authority figure uh, in your life who is granting you the gains. A boss has given you a bonus or um, a father figure or the father of your children, something like that, uh, has, has, has given in a way that, that makes you feel as though you're gaining. Now see, currently you're in this energy of victory. Now this is a victory that is humbling normally this six of fire um, there may have been some type of battle in order to win these gains to win this uh, the time to focus on your business this authority at your work uh, maybe money that you deserved from a masculine uh, father figure in your life and you may have had to fight for it and I see currently that you're in this this energy of feeling victorious having won um, but like I said, it can be humbling victory. So one where you came out on top, you came out with some gains, but it doesn't mean that you didn't come out changed. It doesn't mean you didn't lose anything along the way, right? So there's there's a, there's a need for, for rest after a battle. The Four of Swords depicts a, a soldier after battle, and so does the Six of Spears that it's clarifying here. Um, so I do think that those gains, uh, maybe this respect, authority, um, position, of leadership was hard won hard won and and this is a soldier after battle who is uh, showing thanks giving gratitude for having survived that battle uh, for those that he has left for what he has left and those who helped him to survive it 
So in this space of victory and rest and, and um, humility, find, uh, find that gratitude. Find that gratitude. It is Cancer's uh, a time of things uh, being, being somewhat still for the collective in general. Um, it's not that nothing's happening, but not as much progress forward uh, is being made uh, as everyone wants to see, is the message that came through. Your Seven of Swords reverse clarified with this happy, comfortable, stable home that we see in the Four of Fire, the Four of Wands. Okay, so... In this space of victory and humility that is, is, is upon you, enveloping you currently with this new moon energy on us, Cancers, uh, as you find gratitude for what's helped you make it thus far, we want to make sure that you're, you're meditating in solitude, that you're contemplating your next moves, uh, your path forward totally alone at times not always i'm not saying you can't talk to your friends your family a professional if you do etc i'm not saying you can't get advice from a life coach or a tarot reader or your astrologer right not not discouraging that but there needs to be time for solemn contemplation and meditation as well all on your own where you hear no one else's voice no one else's advice no one else's path or concerns or experiences just your own inner wisdom and your own intuition which is something that came through for gemini's which i did just before you as well it's important because soon this also came through for gemini's different deck entirely but soon there is going to be this illumination and i think that's very much a part of the gift that that this gemini new moon is granting to us cancers this illumination of someone who's been untrue in some way right um, so for some, it's all the way to that extreme betrayal. Some, it's just a lie. Some, it's, uh, someone just having stolen some time from you, you know, but it, it, it affects, it, it affects your time and your energy in some way. Um, and it'll be on a spectrum. It'll be more extreme, more, um, upsetting and, and, and uh, more, you know, more dire circumstances for some than others. But this, this truly is a gift and you need to be ready to receive it, which is why I said go into this, this state of gratitude and in, in solemn contemplation and meditation so that you're totally ready to receive that information uh, so that you accept this loving offer rather than uh, try to look away from it because it might not feel great at first to find out that there's been someone who hasn't been honest with you, right? But as that is illuminated, Cancers, the gift that that ultimately directly also leads to is this happy, comfortable, stable home and family life and or family life, depending on your situation, right? So this may be somebody who's very close to you. Um, it may be someone who you are currently thinking you need to show gratitude toward for helping you make it through this battle, right? Um it, yeah, maybe someone that you really wanted to count among your friends and you really wanted to count amongst what it is that you feel like you have left moving forward. They're, they're, they're part of your victory. They probably celebrate your victory with you. It may be someone that close to you because, you know, it looks like it's, it's, if it's not in your home and family life, it's someone close enough to affect it because when, they're, when their betrayal or their lie or their dishonesty is, is uncovered, it grants you this stable, comfortable, really secure environment. So that's a gift we want to be open to and ready to receive and see the silver lining, see, see, see what's positive about finding that person out. It's way more than silver lining. That's an understatement. I mean, this comfortable, happy home and family life, this can indicate marriage, but, but certainly, certainly that sense of, of stability, um, that we all need to some extent and especially us cancers right and it looks like this is a this is a gift that in the future and i would say not too distant futures it's just the card right underneath the bottom of the deck uh it can lead to this this security 
this happy, comfortable home and family life and the peace of mind and the peaceful emotional state that accompanies that uh, can lead to, to this um, empire, this wealth. You're already this emperor energy ready to rule an empire, right? And if you've got the, if you've got the mindset and the environment to create an empire, well, hell, you just may create one. Or you can, you know, continue to support you and those people who deserve to be a part of that world with you, right? But I do really feel like this is this is a gift and offering from the divine. Um, this is the, the gift, the offering from the divine, the seven of swords reversed, um, the, the victory and the present moment. This is very reminiscent of the Gemini reading I just did. And like I said, I'm using a different deck entirely for the main the main deck. So it's not a matter of shuffling or anything. Uh, if you have any significant Gemini in your chart, you may want to check that reading out as well, Cancers. I hope that illuminated um, at least some of what this new moon is going to do for us for you. If you need a private reading, just scroll down to the description box below. Thank you all for all of your support. A uh, special shout out to the donations, to those of you who have donated. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I hope you make wise choices moving forward. Cancers don't feel boxed in or determined by anything that we've laid on the table today. I love you and I will post another reading for you very soon. Hi, Leos. Let's see what is coming through for you during this Gemini new moon in May 2019. It looks like a choice, a significant crossroads, a significant choice, um, first and foremost. I think you're coming into the energy, Leos, of this Gemini new moon with that choice already on your mind and in your heart. That's the energy you're carrying into the space of the new moon. What it's offering you currently in regards to that choice, Leos, I'm just going to give it a minute to, to fall out for us. I feel like it wants to, it will. And then we'll draw one more card to see what it looks like moving forward as well. We're just going to do a short three card spread. The Magician. And it's leading you right to taking action. It's leading you right to manifesting and maybe manifesting a business, a situation uh, where you're the boss, you're the authority figure, you're in charge. That energy just came through for Cancers. I am going to see if that Emperor resurfaces for us. If not, we'll keep it in mind. Uh, there may be um, Aries energy on your mind uh, with the Emperor and the Magician both showing. But overall, I really think you have a decision to make about what you're going to take action on. And I think it's in regards to work you love to do. Uh, if you skipped right to the Leo reading, you may want to go back and look at the beginning of the uh, recording, look at the message for the collective at the beginning. I feel like it's, it's connecting to a lot of these readings. So that may be for you as well, Leos. And you've got the Hierophant on the bottom of the deck. So the Magician, the Emperor, and the Hierophant, all three showing up in your reading. Let me let, let you take a look at these cards with me and we'll talk a little bit more about them. Okay, Leos, just one extra card from the Spirit Song Tarot deck. And I really feel like in this case, it may just be a, a little extra piece of advice for us here. Um, in regards to this decision you're carrying with you currently, but it looks like, um, or that you carried into this time of the Gemini moon with you, right? But it looks like currently you may have already made, um, already made that decision. Ace of crystals, ace of earth, manifestation and prosperity showing up, but in reverse, 
with the moon card on the bottom of the deck. Imagination and perception, it says in this particular deck. I know you can't see that uh, Spirit Song Tarot card very well there, but but I th yeah, I definitely think this is about you manifesting uh, and choosing which what you want to manifest for a lot of you, Leos. Taking action in regards to what it is you'd like to manifest. A lot of you came into this into this time period of the Gemini moon uh, with this decision on your mind and heart because it was a matter of I either miss the opportunity to manifest or I start uh, committing to what it is that I really want, which means you may have had to start a new routine. It means you may be um, entertaining new uh, spiritual beliefs or beliefs about how to manifest, right? Some of you are, are dealing with an Aries. Some of you are dealing with a Taurus. I wouldn't get hung up on the signs at all. Um, some of you are working toward manifesting a divine feminine energy in your life, maybe because you want to be this empress who rules over her empire, or maybe because you're ready to partner one, right? But there's a faded opportunity on the table. Because in digging below the Hierophant, I've got the Wheel of Fortune. This is good luck, good fortune, like I said, a faded opportunity, but one that you can miss. It's up to us not to miss it. We can't decide always normally when this faded opportunity presents itself. Uh, we can't usually can't decide when or where we run into it. And so we can miss it. It is just an opportunity and we can miss it. And with the Ace of, of Crystals here, it's like there is an opportunity for manifestation and, and prosperity that, that is still on the table that could be missed. And I think that that's the case for most Leos who resonate with this, right? Um, there was a choice in what you wanted to manifest. Did you do you want to manifest with by focusing on uh, a brand new opportunity, or manifest through showing faith and commitment to something that you were already working on? And it looks like the new opportunity was a great one, but it looks like the opportunity that you got when focusing on what you had already committed to, you were already married to, in a sense. Um, that opportunity is greater. Just plain and simple because this is minor arcana, this is major arcana, this seems like fate and the divine stepping in. Um, and not that the ace wasn't also an opportunity from the divine, but it, but it looks like you decided sticking with uh, what you already had faith in, what you had already um, invested in, um, and maybe just finding a new approach or making a new commitment to what you were already working on, um, committing in a new way, committing more time to something that you were already committed to. It looks like that won out for you, or if, if it hasn't yet, it looks like that's what will be happening currently under the energy of this Gemini uh, new moon. And this can also be a Gemini showing up here as well. I have Aquarius energy, Earth energy again. But all of it seems to be in regards to ultimately what you love to work on, work that you love to do so much that you don't notice the time passing, Leos. And that's what you've manifested for yourself. That's what you're in the process of mani manifesting for yourself. And very shortly in the near future, uh, you, will, you will see time, energy being set aside for or directed toward that very work. Now, we may be looking at a collaboration and while time and energy may be going towards something that you love to do, there may be energies around you questioning, uh, questioning your progress, questioning your artwork, questioning your, your decision making regarding this project, right? 
And we also have a message here that all is not uh, what it seems. But with imagination showing up, I think that it's really an, an encouragement for you to apply your imagination and your personal perception to this work that you love to do that will be a focus here in the near future. Um, regardless of whether or not it's a collaboration, regardless of anyone else's opinion. I mean, it depends. Are there three artists? Or as in this picture, is are you just the one artist and there are just people around you judging the work when really it's just for, for you to complete? Uh, you've manifested these opportunities. You've um, manifested... whatever sorry whatever resources etc you needed to move forward with the work you love to do um whatever people you needed to collaborate with right and so you can continue to manifest leos the decision is all but made you are going to go in the direction of uh, uh, uh that which you you already feel committed to and i think in that with this on the bottom of the deck i think in that leos you're gonna really find that that is you know that is what commitment is not to to be too simple but uh that is what commitment means and like i said you're married to this this project to this thing and we could be talking about a person instead of a passion project i just really got the message in the collective read at the beginning um at the beginning of the session that the that the messages would be about focusing on passion projects so yeah you had to choose what you wanted to focus on manifesting right um, did you want to focus your manifestation energies on a new job opportunity or on getting a deeper commitment from the partner you've been with for some of you that's the question that was or is the question and you decided to focus on manifesting um, Mani manifesting uh, something uh, deeper commitment perhaps but something in relation to commitment you were you were already a part of so that project you had been tied to already that person you wanted a deeper commitment from uh, deepening your own commitment to self and your routine whether a spiritual or uh, pre-work routine or otherwise that's what it is for a lot of you. You just really had to recommit yourself and show your faith and what it is that you've already been putting so much work into. And there's this tempting, fruitful, uh, lovely offer that had to be turned down in order to move forward with the other that you were already committed to, the other option, the other road, the other path. Um, and I think, you know, you've, you've felt kind of still, whereas a lot of people feel, feel still now during this Gemini new moon time. Leos, I think you came into it feeling still, feeling like a decision needs to be made. Maybe some of you still in that space, feeling like um, I, you're very much aware that the reason no action is happening is because you're the one who needed or needs to take action and, 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 and make it happen um, or to, to make a decision and, and through that uh, and, and after that take action. But regardless of, of what the specific details are, whatever it was that you felt so committed to that you're choosing over top of this new, brand new opportunity, again, I think it's the right choice. I think it's a greater opportunity. I think it's fated. I think it leads you to your divine feminine or encompassing this divine feminine energy. There's this comfortable, happy, stable home also in connection with it just underneath uh, a love offer that you could be receiving back your empire flourishing, new inspirations or great sex, the divine replenishing y'all, et cetera, et cetera. Yes, that's the death card, but we're, we're digging so deep. Um, I think it's, I think it was, it, that's absolutely the right choice to, to remain with what you're committed to already at this, at this fork in the road. And a lot of you, like I said, have already made that choice in turn. And now the manifestation happens as you knew it would. As you knew it would, because all it needed was your decision to be made. That was all that was keeping you still. That was all that was was keeping you from manifesting is knowing what you wanted to focus on manifesting. For a lot of you, you want to manifest both of these things. It was just a matter of choosing which one first. For some of you, you have to give up one opportunity, the newer one, in order to uh, really see the fruits of 
the labor you've already done to really see um, a deeper commitment with what you're, you're already committed to. But regardless, you're headed toward this, this work you love to do. It's leading you directly to this environment and maybe specifically collaboration. And it can be a necessary collaboration. This is not always a playful one. So keep that in mind. Uh, you may be working with, with people who present themselves to be someone who they're not. Uh, and if it's a necessary collaboration, Leos, then there's just nothing you can do about that, right? You just you you see how the situation flow it turns out. You see if that person needs to be removed from the collaboration, or if you have to remove, remove yourself from the collaboration, right? But that is something to keep in mind. Since I said the tar I felt like the spirit song tarot was going to give us advice, Leos. The last thing I want to say to you. Um, is that I did a, a summer reading for you all already. Not very many have seen it, so I thought I would mention in our new moon reading, uh, you got the last May reading. So I did a Gemini season reading for you. And then the second half of that very long session is I went ahead and I did a summer 2019 reading for you. Uh, I only took us through Cancer season and Leo season, but it's the next couple of seasons projecting forward. So you may be interested in that if you um, want to take a look at that Gemini reading, or I think I even time stamped the summer reading so you could skip right through that. So that could definitely expand on what we've talked about here. If you need advice about the decision still, if you still haven't made it, it definitely looks like go with the, the faded opportunity uh, of commitment or deep, deepening a commitment with what you've already felt married to, I want to say again, the project, the work, yes, maybe the person. Um, that, that is where the, the, how can I say more divine opportunity that it, that is really where the, really your faded opportunity lies. This is, this new opportunity is one that I don't, I don't know that you, if it's a choice between which, if you have to choose between the path you already have already been committed to, or this brand new path, I don't think that. Uh, we have the stamina to stick with this new opportunity as long as we'll need to, the energy, the passion for it, the love for it, right? Uh, but for others, like I said, we're just talking about you want to manifest both these things. It was a matter of choosing which one first. So for this other, it just may not have been the timing to focus on funds, um, something in your material, tangible, physical world. It may not have been the time to focus on manifesting that home, that car, that job, that money, etc. But it may very much have been the time to focus on manifesting more of what you've already been committed to. Certainly, if I'm just talking about what you've already been committed to manifesting for a long time and you haven't seen it coming and you haven't seen it coming and you haven't seen it coming, this new moon in Gemini may very well be that time. that time. So, you know, if you're taking action and making that decision now, I, you know, I definitely say go with the path that you've been committed to. Go with the thing you've been trying to manifest for a long time. Stick with it. And it may help you to know that you're headed toward this work that you love to do uh, in the near future after the, the Gemini moon energy fades. Regardless, you're headed toward this. And yeah, it may be a collaboration that tests you, that you have to keep in mind not everyone in this collaboration is what, what they seem. But for others, it may just be work you love to do. You know, you may, you may not have to specifically deal with collaborating with other people, individuals, personalities. You know, you can collaborate on YouTube, etc. But yeah, definitely, Leos. It, it's, it's exciting because, like I said, to me, this card often talks about work that you love to do so much you don't notice the time passing. And, and I have to believe with the magician right here that that's one of the things that you've been trying to manifest or manifest making money from that thing or manifest a group of people to work on that project with um, or, you know, or, you know, or manifesting just time to focus on it, right? So it looks lovely in that sense that that's exactly the type of work that you're headed toward doing. Uh, even if you have to be patient with other people that you're working with or with how long it takes for the funds to come around, you're so lucky, Leos, that you know what you want to do. <laughs> you're so lucky that you know what you want to do and you get to spend time doing what you love to do. That's 
those that's more than half of the battle figuring out what it is you really want to do and then finding the time to spend on it that's over half of the battle the rest you you wait for divine timing um and hopefully some divine intervention when we need it right in order to help along uh how long it takes to see the fruits of the labor etc um the, basically I'm saying, you know, the rest, it's, the rest is gravy. And I know that can be frustrating when you really need to see money from something. But again, I can only see that it's, it's more than half of the battle to know what you want to do and know where you want to focus your energies, what you want to manifest, and then have time to spend on what you love to do. So if you have to dismiss some personalities that don't jive with you, if you found the wrong group at first and you need to find a new collaboration, et cetera, et cetera, those are really all details that happen after the fact, the magical fact of having found what you want to do and, and even some time to spend on it. So we'll leave it at that, Leos. I know I can leave it in your capable hands moving forward from there. I hope you don't feel boxed in or determined by anything that we've laid out in this short snapshot of, of the path you're on now, of what this new moon in Gemini is offering you now. Thank you so much for all of your support. Uh, I really want to give a special thank you lately to those of you who donate. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And I hope you make wise choices for yourselves moving forward. I love you, Leos, and I will post another reading for you very soon. Hi, Virgos. Let's see what this new moon in Gemini has to offer you. We are using the Deviant Moon Tarot, as I used in the reading for the collective at the beginning of this recording, the beginning of this session, Virgos. Uh, you may want to check out that reading for the collective, and if you'd like to check out information about the Deviant Moon Tarot or any of the decks I use in Lunatics Tarot readings, just uh, scroll down to the description of the video. You can also find information there about the music you're listening to, the copyright uh, free music. I have a playlist linked. You can find information about my private readings if you need one of those. Page of Swords reversed, Virgos. So something is sticking in your throat as you, as you come into this energy of the new moon. Now it's evening now, it's already after 7 on the 3rd, on the day of the new moon, so that's, that's just the energy you carried with you as you came into this, this Gemini moon energy, into this period uh, surrounding the new moon. And likely because you're healing from a heartbreak, okay? Something was sticking in your throat, something was hard to say, um, or you received a message from someone else that was um, hard for them to deliver. And so you're currently in um, this energy of healing. I think that that truth being shared broke your heart, Virgos. Whether you had to say something, share some truth with someone else, or you needed to... Um, hear some truth from someone either way i think it just broke your heart um or you know at the very least was was surely disappointing for you and you've just been um going through going through it right today is a day of of letting yourself feel that disappointing news that possible heartbreak And I, I do, I think it was you. I think it was your throat that the word stuck in. I think it was you, Virgo, who felt like you were being, um, you weren't, your message wasn't being received. You were being honest with someone, but because the word stuck in your throat, because you weren't sure how to say this to them or if you wanted to say it to them, it came across in a harsh or immature way. They found it immature. They found it to be, to be too harsh. Um, and and may, sometimes, you know, it doesn't matter how we deliver something, it's just a harsh, harsh message. And those often are the truths that need to be shared um, either way. So 
I think it was you because I see this ultimately being about you moving steadily and surely and certainly toward something that you really want, toward a goal of yours, and you are going to reach it. Uh, Virgos like this Knight of Pentacles, this Knight of Earth, um, can are very good at, at paying particular attention to detail. And because this knight, representing you, I think, also on the bottom of the deck, Virgos, is so stubborn and, and so attentive to details and is moving so slowly toward his goal, nothing will stop uh, him, her, this knight, from getting there. This, this character will reach its goal. But you may have had to let somebody go, an employee, a lover, uh, toxic energy in your life that you just can't spend time with. You may have had to let someone go and communicate to that to them in order to keep moving surely towards your goals. Let me let you look at these with me, Virgos. I also see that confirmed in the Eight of Cups being right underneath the Knight of Pentacles here, right? So, an Eights, Eights indicating progress toward prosperity to me here. Um, yeah, it's, it's pretty simple and short and sweet for you, Virgos, because it's coming out so clear. It broke your heart. It, it was hard for you to let this person go, to speak these words of truth, to let them know that you, you can't carry them with you in some way, shape, or form as you move forward toward this goal. Um, and in, in the near future, um, as, as you move away from the the Gemini new moon energy. Sorry, I don't know why I keep messing with that. Um, oh, everybody's healing. Everybody's in a space of healing. I just keep messing with this for some reason. Everybody's in a space of healing. So it's not just you. And that's always true, right? Virgos, we're all always healing. All, well, hopefully all always, always growing too, right? Okay, I guess I'm just being fussy in general. This is crazy. <laughs> A Virgo South node. Maybe y'all just bring out the worst in me. That's not true. Uh, that's not true, but uh, I haven't been this finicky with everything in any other reading. But I, yeah, it's all, it's true that we're all always healing for sure. We are always in, in a state of healing, but there's a very specific one going on for you. And I think because you had to communicate a truth to somebody and it was just hard and they may have really received it incorrectly, like really felt like you were being disrespectful, immature, mean, uh, when really you just didn't know how else to share your truth with them. And maybe you did, maybe with lovers or, or, or even just a personality you don't get along with sometimes trying to to kindly share a truth turns into an argument right so maybe maybe both of you one of you both of you did end up being disrespectful etc nonetheless the truth was shared that you needed i think to focus a lot more time and energy on a goal that you were have been and continue to uh move towards steadily steadily surely you're you're getting there but you got to do what you got to do to make it happen, right? You're getting there because you've already decided that you're getting there. So either you or they walked away. You were either saying, I can't take you with me as I approach this goal. You're not being supportive of it. You're not a good employee. This relationship's it, whatever, you know, this relationship needs to end. And I'm not saying you were that harsh, maybe some of you, but you either walked away because you couldn't take them with you or after you shared your truth with them that you needed to focus more time and energy on other goals they, they perhaps walked away from you so i think for some it'll go one way for some it'll go the others but there's a heartbreak following that truth and that that healing healing from that disappointment it, it's going to be on a spectrum for some it's just a disappointment for others it is all the way at the extreme end of being heartbreaking but healing from that disappointment, that heartbreak, is, is what we're doing currently. And so, Virgos, like the rest, you are in this state of pause and stillness during the Gemini New Moon. So again, you may want to look at back, back at that reading for the collective if you skipped right to the timestamp for the Virgo reading. It is kind of connecting with everyone's. In the near future, though, I see uh, the Four of Cups. So I see you feeling like you need to withdraw because... Um, you're still dealing with the heartbreak. Now this this is just right after the Gemini new moon. It's just the, the very near future. So it doesn't mean you'll be stuck in it forever, certainly, but just you need some more time. 
right? That's pretty much no time if the heartbreak and the truthful communication just happened, right? That's pretty much no time. So you just need some more and you'll be getting other opportunities, other offers of love. If it was, did happen to be a lover that you released, um, you'll be getting other opportunities and you won't be very interested in them. You'll be focusing on the one that it feels like you just threw away, right? I think you're feeling very fragile about this, Virgos, either because you expected this person to receive your truth and continue to support you as you work towards your goals, or just because it was very hard to communicate to someone that you couldn't take them with you as you, as you started to work towards your goals. Um, it reminds me of a scenario that I relate to, and I'm not trying to make this about me. Like I just said, the only Virgo placement I have is in South Node, but I can't help it. It really reminds me of a scenario that I have, have been through. Virgos. Um, I was dating someone, and this has been a couple years ago, almost. Um, I was dating someone who just was having trouble being present with me. He was ha having trouble listening. Um, he was on his phone a lot, that kind of energy, you know. And I knew he cared very much for me, but it was a real problem that I couldn't get him to be present with me. And uh, we ended up getting into a tiff about it. And by the end of the tiff, I was saying, you know, I'm trying to start a business right now. I just started, um, or I think at the time I was just getting ready still to start my channel. I knew I was doing it, but I hadn't done it yet. Um, I had just started a new job, just moved to a new city, new home, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I said, I don't have time for this. If this is how our relationship is going to be, if this is how fighting is going to be, if, if this is how trying to get you to be present with me when we have time together is going to be, it's going to be an argument every time. I really don't have time for that. And I ended up uh, having a disrespectful confrontation in that moment with this, this individual, mutually disrespectful confrontation. Uh, and we ended up parting ways. And a few months later, I sincerely regretted it. And I don't know that it's going to be months for, for Virgo. Uh, but it was just a matter of, I did need time and space and peace and calmness and focus. And then once I achieved that calm and peace and focus and stillness in that total stillness, like, oh, I got where I was going. Okay, that's done. Now what? In that stillness, that now what stillness, I realized how much I regretted what it had taken to get there. Um, and I still, to this day, I can't say how much more uh, that what I let go of had meant to me than what I had managed to manifest for myself. I love this work. I love what I do. I love that I have this channel. I, you know, it, it, I could never say, well, I regret letting that go because that meant more. No, not necessarily, because what I chose instead meant becoming and being and living as who I am and being authentic. You know, it's not that love and your partner, it doesn't mean very much to you, but you have to mean just as much to you. And who are they even with if you aren't being you, right? That's what it came down to for me. It came down to I could choose you or I can choose me. And if I choose you, then who are you even with? right so so I chose me and I can't say that I regretted it so greatly that I was like oh no I made the wrong choice um, but I in that stillness I definitely realized wow I feel like I'm the one who chose to throw something very important away and I went about trying to get it back um, but that's you know just my personal saga my personal tale but that's what that's what I feel I honestly I feel feel the emotion as much as I see the scenario that's what I feel coming through for you is just this, there'll be this period afterwards. And I, I suppose, let's draw um, a clarifier to help you deal with that period afterwards, Virgos. Um, one, one piece of advice, not a clarifier, a piece of advice from the Radiant Rider Waite. Uh, but yeah, there'll be this period afterwards. You'll, you'll still be healing, but you'll reach this, this stillness and you won't want other love offers. You won't want other opportunities if it was a, you know, romantic relationship. One or both of you is probably going to be seeking forgiveness. Uh, for some of you, this may be a twin flame, someone who you believe to be a twin flame. Uh, for some of you, it's just someone who's, who's very impactful on your future. Uh, this this whole scenario is, as I was just describing mine, one one very much like that, where it's um, 
your choice of direction is, is something that you're using your free will to make. And you are creating your destiny as you're doing this. And those are often the choices that we're faced with, right? That future or that person, you know? And, and, and it's not always the person and it's not always the future. You, you really have to bring your discernment not just to the table but to every day and every decision because it's not always the same. Sometimes it's you're choosing money over love and you're, you are going to regret that. But sometimes it's you're choosing him or her over being who you want to be and you're going to regret that. And so it's kind of like you were in a scenario, Virgos, where you were going to regret what you did no matter what. But if you choose, if you chose or choose the path that allows you to really be who you are, even if that means walking away from someone who you wanted to be part of your life, who's not being understanding about what you need, right? Then you made the right choice. Then you're making the right choice. I can tell you that wholeheartedly without any doubt or any hesitation, choose you. And, and, and that's, I think, uh, ironically, that comes down to a good way to look at it. What I said and what I said to myself, I hope it connects with some of you. If I choose you over me, then who are you even with? Then I'm making a choice to be with you that ensures you're with someone who's not really me? That sucks. And, and some of you, I have to say it, some of you may think that this is a twin flame, but it's actually a karmic tie. That it doesn't mean that it can't be both. It could be someone who you see as a twin flame journey and they're teaching you karmic lessons. This could be an indication that it's somebody who was toxic for you for a time, but you'll see them again in the future. It's, it, it comes, it, it's always going to come... It's always going to come down to choosing yourself or regretting that. Um, and I don't mean like choosing yourself and your selfish desires over another person, but choosing the road that allows you to be who you are. Choosing the path that allows you to live authentically. It's so important to your soul and personally, I believe, to your afterlife. Uh, to live an authentic life while you're here, Virgos. And it's and, and, and if it's a choice of do I be authentic or do I make someone else happy? Do I be authentic or do I keep someone else in my life? The, the answer is always the path that allows you to be authentic or you will regret it. Now, yes, you may be, as I was, regretting that you had to lose this person. You may be asking for forgiveness in the near future. I, yeah, I do see that. Um, and that'll that'll shake out differently for every Virgo, how this person responds. But if it's somebody that you have this karmic tie bond with, this twin flame journey in mind with, it's very likely that it's relevant to say there is nothing lost that can't be found if sought. Um, if, if you're committed to the cause. And, and here's the thing, here's the thing. If there were harsh disrespect, it might not be you who needs to ask for forgiveness. It depends on what happened when this truth was revealed. But if there were disrespectful, harsh words exchanged, then forgiveness on someone's part, um, apologies and forgiveness on someone's part, at least, if not both, likely both parties' part, uh, is in order regardless of whether the two of you will be coming back together. But I do see a, a holy combination and the mark of the Trinity, which always stands out to me in the Temperance cards. Why it's one of my favorite cards and always has been. Um, so it just may be a longer path to getting back to this person and seeing the union that you really ultimately want with them than you would like. Um, might be a good time to drop in that if you think it is a twin flame journey and I, I try to stay away from talking about the specifics of divine partnerships there's just so much to talk about you know but if it is a twin flame journey from my knowledge on the subject it's not meant to be easy it's gonna likely not for everybody um, especially not for older couples but it is likely gonna be a situation where there are hurt feelings harsh words um, disappointment heartbreak uh, maybe a back-and-forth scenario right uh, that's that's not to be unexpected just in case you heard only the pleasant things about that journey and connected with it and thought that's what you were on but are now seeing this sort of hellacious aspect beneath the surface right and that's again not for everybody but I'm gonna say that when the two of fire comes through for us 
With that, Virgos, I think you got one of the longest readings for sure and what was supposed to be a very short one. And I am going to move on to the next. I know I can uh, leave this in your capable hands. Make wise choices for yourself, for your authentic self, in favor of your authentic self moving forward. Um, don't feel boxed in or determined by anything here. If you need a private reading, I think I already told you, scroll down to the description box. Thank you so much for all of your support. Um, I especially lately have wanted to call out the, the donators, but I appreciate everything, um, orders, likes, comments, subscribes, but a special, special thank you to, to those of you who have been donating. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I love you and I will post another reading for you very soon. Hey Libras, let's see what's going on for you at the new moon in Gemini. May 2019's new moon in Gemini. Libras, we are using the Game of Thrones Tarot for you. King of Cups in reverse shows up first. There is there is an, an there is an issue um, in general with the collective of creative expression being blocked at this time. And then your card shows up, Libra, the Justice card somehow I can't even tell you how really confirming for me the feeling I just had that the overwhelming message for the collective was more for you than for anyone weird so much physical confirmation about that right now why why Libras at the Gemini new moon your cardinal air and Gemini's mutable air um, check it out check out the message for the collective if you skipped right to the I, and i'm telling everybody this but if you skipped right to the uh libra timestamp, uh you may want to check out that message for the collective at the very beginning uh hopefully i'll have that one time stamped as well i'm like looking to see if i did it while i'm still recording so king of cups and justice the King of Cups in reverse Libras, of course, can be a lot more severe than just creative expression being blocked, um, creative energy from your heart space being blocked. It can be more severe than that. But that's the energy that you've moved into, at, at the very least, a mild way of describing it, at the very least is creative expression in your heart space being sort of blocked is what you were carrying with you as you came into this uh, new moon in Gemini energy. Sorry about the ads if you can hear them. Sorry about the music vol volume fluctuating. But ultimately, currently, in, under this new moon in Gemini, Libras, you are feeling very much yourself. You're feeling very balanced. And that's going to allow you to listen to your intuition in the near future. You do have the Ace of Coins, Ace of Pentacles, Ace of Earth reversed on the bottom of the deck let me let you look at these with me okay so you can see what we're looking at here i think i hope and as i said uh this is the game of thrones tarot if i didn't say already you can check the description box down below if you want information about this deck and any of the other decks that i use in lunatics tarot readings uh, you'll also find a playlist of the copyright free music you're listening to and of course that's where information on private readings are libras but aside from that let's look at what's going on at this new moon in gemini for you this is seems to all be about missing an earthly opportunity uh, missing a, an opportunity for basic examples a new house a new job more money something tangible uh, essentially ultimately an opportunity to be healthier maybe through specifically being wealthier in some sense right We've got the nine of spears the nine of fires showing up below that Almost as if, Libras, you've been waiting for or even actively asking for some help regarding this earthly opportunity. Uh, but at the same time, I think you may have missed it because of this blockage, because of this blockage in your, your heart space, because of some inability to be able to creatively express 
uh, to your fullest, to the fullest extent, as much as as much as your heart wants to. Um, did you miss an opportunity, or did you turn one down? Some of you may be dealing with um, a water sign, another Libra energy, a Taurus or Pisces specifically as one of the other water signs. Um, I need some, some clarifiers. I was hoping this would be another quick, uh, not quick reading, the Virgo reading was very long, but um, I was hoping the message would be quick to reveal itself to me, quick to become clear like it was in the Virgo reading. but. I need some clarifiers. Um, let's just get, let's just get three. No, let's just, yeah, let's just get three and then we'll look at the bottom of the Radiant Rider Weight deck as well for us Libras. Libras at the new moon in Gemini. As you came into this new moon in Gemini, you had a decision to make. As did was it Virgos? Or may have been Leos. Um, I think it was Leos. If you have prominent Leo placements, maybe you want to check that one out as well. They also came into uh, this energy of the new moon and Gemini with a decision um, heavy on their heart and, and, and mind. You Libras, I think, were completely of two minds. You were having trouble making the decision because you, you felt both ways about it. Ah, and you felt like it wasn't your decision to make, although it was. Uh, there, uh, so you decided, it looks to me like you decided not to fully express in a creative and or heartfelt way. Stifled your own creativity restrained yourself uh, too much emotionally because you felt like this decision wasn't yours or you felt like you had to make one or the other decision uh, and ultimately it has led you or is leading you to miss an opportunity for greater wealth you may know what this offer this opportunity is it may have already passed for some of you, but for others, the message is about the fact that, that maybe you don't want to miss that opportunity. But currently, it, 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 it's, I'm a little confused because currently it looks gorgeous. You're feeling like yourself. You're listening to your intuition. And, you know, maybe that is the aftermath for some of you. You realize now what opportunity you missed and why you missed it and that you should have just followed your heart and allowed yourself to fully express emotionally. You should have allowed yourself... Uh, you should have known that that this opportunity was for you or at least that this decision about it belonged to you. And if you had possessed it and owned the decision, then you wouldn't have let go of or missed or failed to um, take advantage of this opportunity. Because these aces are, as all the aces are, just seeds to be watered, and we can, of course, choose to not take the opportunity, not take the offer, not water the seed. Feeling very much like yourself, but all is not what it seems. Mm, no. I'm, I'm reading the card facing me, but I, 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 I put it facing you. Feeling very much like yourself, but it because everything has been disillusioned. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Now you see the truth. Now you see the truth. Now you see what you want to manifest, right? Uh, there may have been a fire sign, a Leo Sag or Aries who was heavily influencing this decision, um, specifically a sort of a little bit crazy, intense, temperamental, feminine, uh, but but still influential beautiful, vital, uh, passionate, um, 
energy may have may have had a lot of pull over that decision that may have been why you thought you had to make a certain one why you thought it wasn't um it wasn't yours to make or why you had to make the decision to lose an opportunity with her and choose not to express how you really felt about her because you could see that there was intense temperamental sort of crazy however that speaks to you um energy coming with her and so maybe you cared very much about that feminine mature feminine energy and you saw a future but you thought you know not a future like that not a not a future with an energy like that right um so that may be what you're feeling disillusioned about and why you feel very much yourself because you made the right decision to turn that offer down and and it, it meant stifling um heartfelt energy because you decided to restrain yourself from telling her how you felt about her which is by all accounts seems from an outside perspective like a wise choice if you've decided not to be with that person right and now having made that decision for yourself seeing that it was the right decision feeling disillusioned about who that person is maybe after you told them that you couldn't accept that opportunity and move forward with them then they really freaked out and really showed their ass right so now that you feel totally disillusioned and you know your intuition took you in the right direction, now you are just listening to it like never before. You're in tune with it like never before. Moving forward as one with the High Priestess card here. Moving like a High Priestess yourself. Just totally in tune with your subconscious. I really do read this as, as feeling disillusioned about the situation. Um, in this case in this case with truth on the table with your upright card on the table but for others um that that's specifically how it shakes out for some for others it's a matter of like i said that that same sort of uh temperamental influential very passionate but very intense energy influenced you to make a decision that you know or is influencing you to make a decision that's not the one you would make to stifle <clears throat> stifle your creativity for one reason or another um, and, and make a choice as though it's in their hands, her hands, um, this mature feminine energy anyway, uh, rather than in your own. Um, but one opportunity is not every opportunity. So even if they've taken that from you or you feel that way, um, even if the situation has robbed you of that, then, then that opportunity ultimately won't be for you anyway. Um, or there is a greater one meant for you, right? And I think you can feel that, Libras, because like I said, you're so comfortable in your own skin right now. Even if you lost an opportunity, you're already in the mindset of knowing that that was the cost of, a, of, a, of an invaluable lesson, right? So it cost you this one earthly opportunity, yes, but now you know who that person is. Now you know never to go against your own intuition when it's speaking that loudly to you ever again, not to suppress creative or heartfelt energy, energy from your heart space, loving energy um, that your intuition is telling you to put out into the world just because someone else is trying to control your decisions. Now you feel disillusioned in and, and, and the fact that you won't ever hand the power of making your own decisions away to someone else, regardless of how intense and passionate and beautiful and vital they are ever again, right? So I think you're already seeing Libras that it was, this invaluable lesson was worth the cost of one opportunity if you've even lost it. Some of you, this is reaching you at a time when you still have time to make that decision for yourself and go in the direction you wanna go. If you have already made that choice for yourself and it was about letting go of that temperamental, um, even violent uh but but certainly vibrant as well energy um then congratulations i don't even need to tell you you've done the right thing for yourself like you're you're so in tune with your intuition you feel so disillusioned you feel like you're you feel like so powerful wielding this sort of truth and like you're never gonna stop you're never gonna stop talking to your subconscious you're never gonna uh, you're always going to keep your conscious and subconscious in communication. You're you're always going to wield this sort of truth, and and in that, you know, it makes sense. You're Libra, you know, you you the, with the Justice card representing you, 
here you are wielding that sword of truth. No wonder you feel that way. Because when you feel yourself and you feel balanced, that's exactly what you do is wield that sword of truth. Your cardinal air. Cardinal cerebral mental activity and knowledge, right? Um, in certain ways. So uh, maybe don't lose that feeling, you know, rock with it, ride with it, roll with it. That's that that very much is who you can choose to be. Now you'll misstep as everyone does sometimes, but um, you're feeling like yourself and listening to your intuition. And now the clarifier here that we didn't even need moving forward, you're not going to miss the next opportunity that's for you. If if you're of amongst the Libras who miss this one, you've learned your lesson. Your, your choices are your own. You're following your heart. You see the truth. You've You've cut this person out if necessary, this temperamental person. You're not questioning your intuition and you're not missing the next opportunity. So that is lovely Libras. Uh, thank you so much, all of you, for all of your support. Um, I may have told you already, information on private readings is down below. I hope you make wise choices for yourselves moving forward. Please don't feel boxed in or determined by anything we've laid out on the table here today. And I love you, Libras, and I will post another reading for you very soon. Hi Scorpios, let's see what the new moon in Gemini has to offer you this May 2019. King of Swords is the energy that you are coming into the uh, new moon in Gemini with. And this is the Radiant Rider Weight that I am using to clarify, or I'm sorry, to do your reading. We'll use a different deck to clarify, Scorpios. Queen of Cups. And information about this deck, the Radiant Rider Weight, and any other deck that I use in Lunatics Tarot readings is down below in the description box, Scorpios. Okay. So you've got the King of Swords, the Queen of Cups, and the Tower. Uh, I want to let you look at these with me. Um, if you do, check out the cards, or if you don't, um, information about the decks is down below, information about private readings is down below, and information about the music that you hear also down below. Okay, here's what we're looking at, Scorpios. It looks like you came at this new moon. You came into this, this, this space and time very much in your mind. A master of your mental realm, but very much focused on cerebral cerebral activities, decisions, plans, just in in your in your thoughts. Um, and it's this is a this is a very mature masculine air sign energy. Um, it's a very positive thing. It just looks like you've transitioned from being very much in your mind and your thoughts and your mental activity to being very much in your feels, being very much um, in your feelings, focused on your emotions, uh, feeling your way through life rather than thinking your way through life. Uh, so maybe right as this energy of the, the, the uh, Gemini new moon hit, suddenly you were feeling your way through instead of thinking your way through. Which it's interesting for you to have been thinking your way through to begin with Scorpios, but Scorpio may be your sun, moon, rising, uh, I, I figure moon sign would be particular, particularly pertinent um, as this is Lunar Tix Tarot and a new moon reading, but um, it may just be that the title resonated with you or that it's your Venus or Mars or North Node or Midheaven. Any reason you identify with, with Scorpio or that you found this reading, I think uh, your intuition tells you if it's for you. And then ultimately we have the Tower card, a card that also, both of these cards can represent Scorpio for me here. Uh, so a card that also says you're very much uh, in your own skin, feeling like yourself, feeling comfortable in your own skin. Uh, but I, I, I don't think that that is all that the tower is representing for everyone. 
Uh, for some, it is. For some, it's just a matter of you were Gemini season had you very much um, in your headspace. And like I said, thinking your way through life. And then as this new moon hit, you've sort of remembered who you are or remembered how to feel your way through as is more Scorpio's nature, right? And then um, as you're moving away from this energy, you're just feeling just so much like yourself. But for others, you've been thinking your way through life. As you come to this new moon, something is making you particularly emotional. Uh, maybe extra empathic to some energies around you even. Um, and you have a revelation about that. You have a revelation about feeling your way through certain parts of your life, certain um, people in your life, certain relationships in your life. You have a revelation about feeling your way through those interactions, certain ones, rather than thinking your way through them. And we very much could be looking at an emotional upheaval with the Tower card as well. And the King of Air, the King of Feathers in this, in this deck, the Spirit Song Tarot deck, shows up again. It's the King of Feathers here, noted as Logic and Justice here. Ah, uh, I see, I see. Okay, okay, okay. So this is all about work that you love to do and probably necessary collaborations related to that work that you love to do. Now currently, as with almost every sign, I know you can't see these spirit song tarot cards very well. Let me see if um, I can adjust the light to help with that at all. No, not really, but I tried and that's what matters, right? So you've been very much in your headspace. Um, because you've been going through a time of challenge and growth uh, and probably dealing with some ego drama in the more distant past. But with the five of acorns in this deck, fire wands, rods, it looks like it's been dealt with. You brought a piece to, to some ego drama that you were dealing with. And I'd likely say that it was in, in uh, it has to do with this collaboration. It, 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 um, it's related to work you love to do, but probably, like I said, a necessary collaboration. Now you're in this period of stillness where there's either slow progress or no progress, where, like I said, um, most, most of the Zodiac seems to be, uh, at least on this table, during the new moon in Gemini. And that may be because you had to deal with some ego drama. So now everything's sort of come to a, a halt. And I think, I think what I see happening just in these few cards going forward, it looks like you found a, a space of peace. Okay, we're no, no, not much progress is happening, but the egos have kind of quieted down or any sort of petty drama um, that was a result of those, the, the egoic behavior has sort of calmed down, yes? Um, and, and since you've made it, or as you are making it away from that time period and you're realizing, okay, everything's at peace, everything's slowing down a little bit. Um, now that's why you gravitate back toward feeling your way through. You had to think your way through that shit, right? You had to think your way out of that shit. And that's what you were dealing with. Challenges and growth apparently put you more in your mental space, your head space, uh, whichever, whomever Scorpios this, this, this is resonating with it this message is for and as you move back into your feels you let your guard down a little bit with the strength card reverse or you were dealing with a leo in this egoic work situation 
um, who was particularly upsetting. And that's another reason you've gone back to inspecting your feelings and your emotions. Um, you just dealt with that ego drama, that particular ego, if it was one person, you just dealt with that uh, with a cutting sword, with the edge of that blade, very pragmatically. You said, oh, well, I'm not all fixed water. There is some air in here somewhere. And you may have cut somebody out if you had to, or you let them know that you would if you needed to, right? And so now that the decision has been made, that the, the law has been laid, the words have, the truth has been spoken, right? Um, now that that matter is taken care of very matter-of-factly, right? With the edge of your bl blade, you said what needed to be said, cut out who needed to be cut out. Now let's get back to the ooey gooey, soft, watery Scorpio that we love to be, right? So now you've moved back into that space and are inspecting your feelings and how you feel about what you just said, the ego drama that just happened. Did they hurt you? You didn't even notice at the time because you were just pragmatically dealing with it, right? Um, but uh, but of course, if those wounds are down there deep, then Scorpio feels them and sees them and needs to go in and address them. So now you're now you're thinking, okay, how do I feel about the interaction, the ego drama? Um, and maybe a Leo lost. Maybe for some of you, a Leo lost in that ego drama. Um, but as you've moved back into your feels, I do think you've let your guard down a little bit for most of you too. And now, <laughs> here comes a tower moment where likely that same ego, or at the very least, that same type of ego drama, right, is rearing its ugly head um, even louder than before. Even louder than this initial roar that we see here, right? Um, and I think it's somebody you're working with. I think it's unfortunately maybe somebody who you're collaborating with on a project, a work that you actually love to do. So your advice in dealing with that tower moment when the truth is exposed, when the person's ego rears its ugly head again, when you see that this problem, you thought you nipped it in the bud, but it is not over. This person's not done. This this work drama is not done, right? When, when they come throwing a full blown bitch fit tantrum to try to, I don't know, get you back for what you said, uh, for a situation you thought you took care of, maybe for firing them if that's the specific case. You see where I'm going. For, for either cutting them out of a situation or letting them know that they were on thin ice is what's happened. Um, when, when they come throwing their tantrum about it, you step back into this energy is your advice. You know what to do. You know who to be. And really what I want to say is you know who you are because if you're accessing that's uh this type of cerebral no bullshit energy i don't you know i'm not really concerned with either of our feelings right now we're going to do and say what needs to be done and said right um that's what it, the cards are advising you to step back into that energy snap right back i know you just did this a couple days ago and you wanted to go back into your feeling empathetic ways but when when they bring the tower crashing down on top of you and I think it's this other person and I think it's this ego drama, but it might be something unavoidable from the divine when we see the tower card. It is a major arcana, right? But when when they bring the sky down on you, when things start to fall apart, you know what energy to snap back into tomorrow and here in the near future, relatively near future for you because, because you just did it. Now we also have union and harmony in reverse on the bottom of the deck. So some of you, um, it may have not only been someone that you collaborated with on a work that you love to do, but also uh, a partner, maybe in the work that you love to do, or actual romantic partner of some type. Um, yeah, what I see happening here is if you haven't had to let someone go from this ego drama already, what we're seeing on the table is get ready because this energy, this egoic energy, this drama, this pettiness isn't done with you. It's coming back. And if you haven't had to let someone go because of it, there probably is going to be a split. You probably are going to ultimately have to let some egoic petty energy leave your life, at least for a time, Scorpios. That's what I'm seeing really clearly now, now that I've got the, the rest of the cards out. So 
That's straightforward. Again, you know what to do. We will leave it in your capable hands from there forward, Scorpios, as this new moon recording is getting super long. Um, but I so enjoyed it. Um, thank you so much for checking it out and for all of your support for, for all the things, likes, comments, subscribes, emails, messages, orders, but especially lately, I've been wanting to give a special shout out. Thank you to all the donations. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Um, so with that, I hope you don't feel boxed in or determined by anything you're looking at here, Scorpios. Um, I hope you'll make wise choices for yourselves moving forward. And forgive me for saying Scorpio so many times in the reading. Uh, if you need a private one, I think I already told you to scroll down. All the information and links is below. I love you and I will post another reading for you very soon. Hi, Sag. Let's see what's going on for you at the new moon in Gemini. May 2019's new moon in Gemini. What energy is Sag bringing with them? What gift is this moon offering them? Where are they headed? And Sag, I do intend to let you look at these cards with me. After I have a look at the reading, I will put the camera down on them, flip the cards around for you. We're just doing a short three card reading for the new moon. Knight of Swords comes up upright. So you've been focused, you've been determined. Um, acting quickly, not out of character, Sag. Thinking, planning, maybe looking back at where you've been in order to plan about, uh, accordingly as far as where you're going. Now, sometimes with the Knight of Swords, even in the upright, you can be acting so quickly that it's too quickly. You can be a little reckless. We'll see what else comes through for you. This is the Deviant Moon Tarot that we're using today, Sag. I might get clarifiers if I need them from another deck. I see the Seven of Pentacles, the Judgment card, and the Four of Wands reversed. So as I said, maybe looking back at where you've been, um, how you've gotten where you are now in order to plan accordingly, maybe what you're noticing is that because you've waited so long for certain projects to come to fruition, for certain money, income, resources to flow in, um, uh, in regards to something I think you invested a lot in, it may have negatively affected your home. Your, your home and or family life, the stability of that home and or family life because you had a lot of, just frankly, a lot invested in something that took a long time or was taking a long time to come to fruition. Maybe that's why you've been so focused and determined making new plans. Currently though, you have another night. So a lot of action, um, uh, only it's in reverse. It's the night of water, the night of cups, and it's reversed this time. An indication to me that someone is being a little manipulative currently, maybe um, making promises that they can't keep, um, maybe emoting an awful lot uh, in regards to a way that they think they feel when really um, if they gave the matter more time, they would realize uh, that over, over time they feel differently about whatever they're emoting toward. Or we can, we can, again, be looking at creative expression from your heart being blocked, even when it's the Knight of Cups reversed. The Ten of Fire, Ten of Wands, is also in reverse. It's on the bottom of the deck. Where this is heading is the Four of Cups upright. So as I said, Sag, um... I will let you look at these cards with me quickly. I just want to say, I know I already told you that this is the Deviant Moon Tarot. If you want information about it though, or any of the decks I'm using, uh, just go down to the description box below where you will also find information on the music you might be able to hear and private readings if you'd like one from me, your links and all that's below. But I will uh, flip this around and let you take a look at the reading with me. 
So this is ultimately overall all about you taking a much needed break and it may be one that's thrust upon you that feels like it's forced upon you because you're simply trying to complete something all on your own um, and it's it's too much for one person to carry, right? Um, in other words, to follow along with this particular depiction, trying to carry this whole bundle and ending up dropping it. Um, or it may be a choice. It may be a break that's thrust upon you, or it may be you realizing that you need one. Um, if you don't know now, you certainly will post New Moon in Gemini, because that's where I see you choosing to withdraw. As this is where I see you being offered new opportunities, um, just receiving new offers in general, and, and not wanting them, turning them down, saying no. Let's get one clarifier. We're going to use the Radiant Rider weight and get one clarifier on the Knight of Cups here. The Knight of Cups, the Knight of Water in reverse. It may have been an offer, um, you may be receiving an offer that seems timid and shy, but from someone who you think is a divine masculine counterpart to you, or who is a father figure, an authority type in your life, okay, or a boss of yours, could very well be a boss when you see the emperor. Um, or it's an offer from an Aries, but either way, if that's the case, I think that that person is being manipulative with you currently, Sag. I hate to say, because with that Knight of Cups in reverse, I do. I see manipulation. Um, possibly even someone having an affair. You'll know, obviously, if that's you. As I say that, as I say that, I literally could not, tried to, and could not keep the Three of Swords in the deck. And it was all kinds of sideways, so we'll just do that with it. Yeah, I mean, you're either, you're either breaking hearts or, or having your heart broken around this Gemini new moon. Um, it's, and it's, it's because someone isn't fully expressing from their heart space. Um, it's because someone is confusing feelings with emotions, which not everyone draws that distinction, but it's a really useful one that I always like to keep in mind is, um, you know, when, when we're talking about emotions, a lot of times we're referencing that that rush of emotions that onset of emotions that happens for example when you first meet a person and you're really attracted to them when the hormones are flowing and the chemicals are combining and and uh, you can make all kinds of intense promises about loving them forever and committing to them and giving them certain things that they want and need or or some people can right i'm not saying all of us but um and then uh come to find later that after some additional thought and time um, and knowledge learned about that individual that or maybe knowledge learned about yourself even right those were just onset rushes of emotions and your true feelings are a little bit different right so this is often someone making offers and promises that they can't keep when we see it in reverse when i do um and it's heartbreaking again it's it, it's pro and and with this with what I see right now, and I don't always see this with the three, just because it's a three and just because it's a three of swords even, I do feel like it's a third party situation with this being a potential indication of affair and then it's crossed with the sideways three that would not stay in the deck. It just feels very much like someone's having an affair and, and, and uh, or, or doing, engaging in some type of betrayal that very much feels like one or similar to that type of betrayal. And again, I don't know, Saj, if that's someone that you're heavily focused on because they're doing that to you or if it's you. Um, and I'm sure it may split both ways. I'm not accusing anybody of anything, but it could be either. It could be that you're just completely consumed with that person's energy because they've hurt you so um, and you're wondering what's true and if there is a third party. Um, or it can be... Um, 
it can be that you're engaging in that type of activity and there's no judgment here sag but uh it can be that you're you're engaging in that activity and 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 breaking hearts let's get one clarifier slash piece of advice on the four of cups and then i will have to move it along who's next capricorn's next Wow. Yeah, so I think you, um, you're moving through a space of healing, hopefully. Some of you are still, this is all about commitment. This is about, okay, so you're, you're laying that burden down. Someone has, someone in the situation, you or another party has promised uh, a certain type of commitment. Maybe even someone was looking forward to marriage, but but one or the other tried to make things happen too quickly. Our third night, you might look into 12, 12, 12 showing up. You also might look into the reading for the collective that's at the beginning if you skipped right to the Sag reading. Um, that, that message for the collective seem, seem to, to, seems to connect to many of these, if not all of them. Um, but yeah, there's just a lot of immaturity here and being uncertain of one's, um, being uncertain of one's true level of commitment to a person and situation, uh, but promising that it was there, right? Um, and sometimes that it is a case of this night just being immature and just not knowing themselves well enough to do right by everyone in the situation. But nevertheless, in, in the future, moving out of this space of the new moon in Gemini, you're the one left feeling, it looks like, uh, that you threw away something that you shouldn't have. But n then again, uh, if what's covering you is their energy, then this could be flipped as well. Then perhaps what you're heading toward is, is, is their energy. Um, I, I'm kind of feeling that coming through that it may just be an telling you about what you want to know about answering the questions that you want to hear about. Um, so it, um, whoever the manipulator in the situation is, if that's the case specifically, I believe it's that person who here in the future is uh, feeling trapped. Feeling trapped by their own thoughts, probably thoughts of guilt, guilt I would guess. Um, feeling trapped because they can no longer move forward with this person they were dishonest with and it was likely a third party, a three party situation. But they don't want their other offers. They want what they just threw away. Like it literally just left their hand and they want it back already. So that, uh, that may be you, Sag. If you're dealing with a Virgo, if you're dealing with a Virgo, um, check out their reading. It, it connects to this one through this Four of Cups. And, it, and in that case, I want to say if you came to this table and it's a Virgo for this reading, I feel like there is not a third party situation. What they said to you was harsh and heartbreaking from your point of view maybe incredibly immature and disrespectful from your point of view um and i'm not defending across the board all virgos you know i'm just telling you what's come through on this table for this session um but in that case i you know i don't want to lead you to believe that it's a third party situation otherwise that's come through really heavily but what came through really heavily in the virgo reading was that they may have broken a heart that made the other person feel like there's got to be some explanation like another person when really they just needed some time to focus on themselves and their work. But, you know, that's neither here nor there. If you and this person can't be together, don't want the same thing, aren't seeing eye to eye, if that's, you know, um, then the point of this reading is just talking about you putting that burden down and moving forward regardless. For some of you, I do see it being them that regrets having thrown you away. And, and again, if it's a Virgo, this did show up in this position for them. They're regretful, uh, but they had to choose themselves rather than someone else. Um, and, and, and in a healthy way is what mainly came through for that reading. And that's an indication for you to put the burden down and choose yourself as they did. But, it, you know, don't get too hung up on the signs. It may also be a Taurus here. This could also be... 
a, a big indication that you are headed toward the commitment that you're looking for. It's just not this person, this manipulator, this heartbreak, um, Virgo or otherwise, that that is going to give that to you. But you're headed toward it. Your problem, your only hang up is trying to make it happen too quickly. Um, and, and that may have been part of what got you in trouble here. If you wanted to rush things along, then you would have overlooked the fact that they were rushing into making promises and commitments too quickly. You would have noted things like, wow, how do you feel that way about me already? How can you promise that already, right? You may have noticed that, but you maybe didn't because you were being a little reckless. You were making plans for the future. You were very focused and determined on having this connection as well. And so when both people are caught up in that, it's likely to progress very quickly. And it's likely, more likely than not in my experience, that at least one of them is not actually ready. At least one of them is not actually ready to make the commitments. Now, again, there's no judgment here. Yours has been the hardest reading to move through <laughs> by far, um, both because there are multiple messages and it's a little confusing, but also just because it's not an entirely pleasant feeling to sit in. Um, and I empathize with you truly. I, uh, I think this could be either of you here. I think this could be you not wanting to accept other offers and feeling trapped because you're still thinking about the heartbreak. Um, and in that case, it's you feeling like you can't trust yourself and you just have to make the choice, Sag, to trust yourself again. Just because your judgment about one person in one situation was wrong, give yourself some time and then take that leap again. That's, that's the only thing to do is move through the heartbreak, move through the healing, and then yes, take another chance on another person. But give it more time. Go a little slower, right? Inspect a little closer. Ask more questions. Demand a little more, some of you, for sure. And it's completely okay if there's a period of withdrawal where you're just not ready to move on yet. And I honestly feel like it, it, regardless of whether they meant to be manipulative or not, um, whether it's just immaturity or, or something more, right? I honestly feel like it's, it's them in the relatively near future regretting what they've thrown away as well. And it, and it makes sense, right? If you're that personality type that's going to say a lot of things, you're not sure if you're, you mean and rush into something, then you're also the same personality type that's going to turn around and go, oh, shit, what did I just drop? What was it worth? You know, an immature childish figure just isn't thinking or an overwhelmed person with tons and too much on their plate just isn't thinking sometimes. So I, I, it's, it's definitely them. It might be you as well. The withdrawal period is natural and there's nothing wrong with it. My heart goes out to you. I'm with you, Sag. Um, I don't, I hope I didn't make light of anything too much. I didn't mean to say it's neither here nor there if there's a third party situation as in that's inconsequential. I know it matters very much to you at present. Um, but especially with it coming out sideways, it's another indication that for some of you there was, for some of you there wasn't. Um, and I think in this situation, I, again, I'm not, I don't mean to say it doesn't matter when that probably matters a lot to you. Um, but ultimately the why of why this isn't the right person for you and why this isn't the commitment for you ultimately won't end up mattering. The person who is the commitment for you, the person who you're going to be instead of the person stuck with someone who would inadvertently or not manipulate you is what will matter. Uh, the fact of the matter right now is just that it's not the person in commitment for you. And and that is all you need to know moving forward. It is really difficult to get that answer to the question. I think for some, there was a third party situation. For others, it just felt like one because this person had uh, their work. They were so involved with their work that that was like there was someone else, may have even caused suspicions. So, um, but if you, you know, if you want that question answered specifically, scroll down, check out the information and links on the private readings. That is certainly something that we can do. Uh, otherwise, Saj, I have to leave it at that in your capable hands. I know you can handle it. Um, I wish you swift and enlightening healing. <clears throat> healing, sorry. Uh, thank you all for all of your support to Lunatics Tarot, all of it. Likes, comments, shares, subscribes, all of it. But in particular, especially um, lately, I just want to say thank you so much for the donations, guys. It's 
does not go unnoticed. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And I uh, hope you make wise choices for yourselves, all of you, moving forward. Don't feel boxed in or determined by anything we put on the table. I love you, and I will post another reading for you very soon. Hi, Capricorns. This is... Oh, wow. Okay. I hear ya. This is a very emotional time for you, it looks like. You're feeling very fragile. Maybe so fragile that you've totally numbed yourself, and so the phrase, this is an emotional time for you, doesn't resonate. It actually feels like the opposite of the truth, but I think that would be because you've kind of numbed yourselves because you are feeling so fragile. Two queens reversed. Feeling a little fragile. Um, feeling a little temperamental. Um very emotional too much in your feelings you're not comfortable with it you'd probably rather be temperamental uh you may be being a little flaky just leaving some of your commitments to take care of themselves you've got the nine of swords so you've got some anxiety some stress uh, the Queen of Cups reversed, that's that fragility. And then the Ten of Spears, ultimately, the Ten of Wands, Rods, Fire, um, feeling overwhelmed. And the message wanted to come right out. This is the Game of Thrones tarot that I'm, I'm using for you. You can find information about that deck and all the decks I use in Lunatics Tarot readings down in the description box below, where you will also find information about the music and... Um, private readings, um, links, information, my email address, all of that below. I'm going to let you look at this with me, Caps. Okay, so this is what we're working with. This is what we're looking at. So you stepped into this energy of the new moon in Gemini, already feeling, as I said, anxious, um, Maybe losing sleep even because of the the anxiety, the worry, the fear, the doubt in yourself. Um, and and what's the doubt about? You know what are what are we working on? Something you feel very passionately about. Something, someone you feel a lot of passion toward. But either the work is frustrating or the person is frustrating because it is putting you in this temperamental state. You're kind of ready to pop at them. Um, and some of you, because of the anxiety, the fear, the doubt, you're even in a space caps of feeling a little sorry for yourself. And I'm not saying that there's never a time for a pity party, but, um, and I don't want to be harsh with you, but uh, the pity party may have been going on too long at this point for some of you, or if we're more so talking about, if this is more so indicating that you're flaking out on commitments, you may be flaking out on the wrong ones or on too many, right? But you're feeling despair, you're feeling hopeless, probably in regards to reaching a goal that it's taking a very long time to, to reach. But once you get there, ten of coins, your empire, your palace, your fortune, right? Everything that you want to attain and then hold on to, caps. Um, but the knight of coins, the knight of earth, has a long road to hoe. He has a long journey. She, in this case, he or she, the one, has a long journey in front of them. A one in which they have to be stubborn and pay attention to detail and be very committed the whole time to reaching their goal. That's how they reach it. That's why they always reach it. And that's so much you, Cap. Your earth energy, that's earth energy, that knight of coins there. That's so much you. But you're just getting, you're thinking about flaking out. You're feeling sorry for yourself, you're feeling unmotivated maybe, uninspired maybe. Of course, I mean, this worry, doubt, fear, anxiety can take all the winds out of your sail. And so then that just snowball effects right into what I think is more of our current moment um, now. And, and we're talking about that fragility, either being overwhelmed with your emotions to the point of to the point of just laying them on other people where you should probably restrain yourself, right? Um, letting them flow out in ways at times uh, that's, that, that is negatively affecting your other relationships or projects in your life, right? 
Um, and that can certainly happen when you're full of anxiety and worry and doubt and fear, right? There's no judgment here at all. There's just understanding that space. And, and we want to be careful if you're among the Capricorns who are shutting down. Um, I have to say that when I see the Queen of Cups in reverse, if this is, like I said, one more time, this is either somebody who's showing too much emotion over overflowing with it because they're overwhelmed or none at all. And I feel like talking about the none at all, because that can be you Capricorns, um, and it can be anybody, but she can take this numbness if that's what it is for you. If you're turning your fragility into numbness, she can take this to not only an irrational place, but a paranoid place. She can take this to a very weak, even becoming manipulative toward other people place. So in one way, shape, or form or another, she ends up being extra. You either let, them, let your emotions flow out now or they end up flowing out in an even darker, nastier way later. So I'm not saying, I'm not accusing anybody, and I'm not saying that that's what you're doing to somebody now. I'm just warning you that that card is warning me that that is the spectrum that you're on, right? You're on the same spectrum with people who do that. So you want to really be careful about choosing numbness rather than choosing to feel your way through this. Go ahead and feel your way through this. Yes, it's hard. This work is taking too long. You're right. It's too long. The rewards will be worth it. But to the version of ourselves who hasn't enjoyed them yet, it's too damn long. And that's a fact. It's too long. It doesn't mean we're going to rob us, rob ourselves of those riches and rewards that we are headed toward. Any knight, any journeyer, any hero on his journey, especially if they're on a journey like this, where there's no doubt that they are arriving where they set to arrive, but it's going to take as long as it needs to take. Um, anybody on that journey, even the hardest worker, Capricorn, even the most patient person, anybody on that journey would grow frustrated at a certain point. Anybody on that journey would feel this anxiety, the sadness, the doubt, the fear that it's all been for nothing. So let yourself feel it. Let yourself move through it. Feel into it. It's part of your experience. It's part of your journey. It's part of your story. It's part of who you are. Own it. Let yourself feel your way through it. If you're already just overwhelmed and overflowing and you're not doing the numb thing, you're not taking the numb route, you're just allowing it all to flow out, then congratulations because that's really what I see you being advised to do in the cards that have come out here. Now, moving out of this, you're still going to feel overwhelmed. I have a feeling that at this point you've dropped your bundle of sticks, you've, you're taking your break, and then when you go to return to the work, you find that it is still overwhelming and you have to pick each one of those sticks up and, and get your bundle back on your shoulder and keep trudging along and keep going. Um, but it's the end of a spiritual journey. Maybe you've been looking at this as a material journey, a physical one, because it's supposed to give you all of these riches that we see here, right? Maybe you've been looking at it, at it as of late, today at least, as an emotional journey, because it brings all these colors out of you and sides of you that you never knew you were, never wanted to show again if you felt this way before, right? Never, um, don't really want to, it seems, own. Um, and you're bringing, they're bringing the journey is bringing all these colors out of you that are making you ask, is the, is it worth it? And it, to me, you know, it's up to you, but this looks worth it. Security, skills earned, um, being able to take care of yourself and anyone else that you want to put in your home and know that it's because you learned how to <laughs> and know that those skills ensure not only that home at present for all of you, but in the future moving forward can start a family if you don't have one you can take care of yours if you do it looks worth it to me but maybe you've been viewing it solely as that an emotional journey a, a creative journey a, a a material money journey right 
but that part of you right now, Caps, that's saying, fuck this, fuck this, I'm laying these down and I'm, I'm either crying or I'm getting pissed because this is too much, it's too long, I'm upset, this is unfair. That part of you that's speaking up and wanting to just scream, that's your spirit. That's your spirit. That's just, it's just, I, I want to scream for you. Uh, maybe you do just need to let a scream out, but that is just bursting. It's just saying too much work, too much work, not enough play, um, too much work, not enough emoting. Um, and in fact, it's also that part of you that is going to see you through. It's that fierceness. It's that volatility. It's that, that temperamental maybe even violent in a certain way, but certainly vibrant and uh, just beautiful um, and influential, influential part of you, um, inspiring and inspired part of you. It's also that part, the same part that is screaming, I need a break right now. I need to deal with my emotions. I need to deal with this anxiety. I need to blow a couple commitments off. It's that same fierce, honest, roaring part of you, that soulful part of you, right? It's that same spirit that's also going to get the job done after it's had its little, for lack of a better word, tantrum. I'm not saying that you're a kid throwing a tantrum, but this part of you that's saying, ah, oh, I need a break for a second. I got to deal with my anxiety and my emotions here. That's the same. It's the same exact strength. It's so strong that it's causing, it caused you to put these sticks in this bundle down, right? Caused you, Capricorn, to take a break. That's that same strength that you're encompassing within that's going to get you through the journey, that's going to pick them up and finish it because it is, even if it's creative and monetary and emotional for you, it is also, it is a spiritual journey coming to a completion that you are seeing through. So yeah, it's heavy. Hell yeah, it's heavy. Hell yeah, you gotta put down those that bundle sometimes. It's hard to carry, e even for the hardest worker. I feel so much like I'm the right person to say that to you because I'm a Taurus and I relate to Capricorns a lot and we're both Earth signs, but that's a big difference between us, right? Yes, we'll commit to getting where we're going. Yes, we'll commit to doing the work, but for Tauruses, it's a little different. We're like, if it's something that's gonna make my mind, body, and spirit happy. If I, a lot for breaks along the way, must, must break, nap, eat, enjoy, right? Um, this isn't just about me like criticizing you or anything, but that's, that just seems to be what's been missing here. It's a long journey. You're gonna reach the goal, the destination. You're gonna carry the weight of this and all on your own because it's a spiritual journey. So you're, you're doing a lot of it by yourself necessarily. Because, again, it's not just emotional, it's not just creative, it's not just monetary, it's spiritual. So it's yours. But, yeah, you're going to break along the way to eat and sleep and enjoy so that you don't reach these points where you get overwhelmed. Right? So that this doesn't happen again. So that you don't either have to be extra or numb. So that you don't have to, to flake out on anything. But from what I can see, like, so what that you did right now? I don't, I don't, I wouldn't judge you or blame you at all for that. Uh, and I hope you don't judge or blame yourself for that moving forward because it's a long, heavy, burdensome journey and we've all got them and we're all human. So there's always a need for a break along the way, Capricorns. You just, you have to allow for it. I think that's your lesson here. I think that's what you're giving, you're being given time and space to acknowledge at this point so that moving forward, you don't have to carry less. And you don't have to choose less ambitious goals or destinations. You just have to remember to allow yourself to, to break more along the way. Schedule your breaks rather than have it be, I'm gonna flake out now, I'm gonna cry now, or I'm gonna shut down on everyone now. Schedule your mental health days, your breaks because this is a heavy, long journey. Um, schedule them as celebrations along the way, uh, maybe with the people you collaborate with or with the people you don't see enough because you're collaborating, whatever calls to you. But schedule days to celebrate the progress you've made so far on this long, heavy journey. I can feel resistance. I know that just sounds like not the thing to do, but I really think the reading just told us that it is Capricorns. 
sweet and simple and to the point. So thank you so much for all of your support to Lunatics Tarot. It's truly appreciated. I feel like the Sun card is a great indication for you moving forward. Uh, happiness, joy, authenticity coming your way after all of this Capricorns. Um, but yeah, a special thank you to those who have been donating um, always, but uh, as of late, I've just really wanted to say thank you so much for all the donations. And I already told you information on private readings is down below. Thank you again for all your support though. Likes, comments, subscribes, shares, emails, messages, orders, all of it is so appreciated. I hope that you all make wise choices for yourselves moving forward. Please don't feel boxed in by anything we put on the table today. I love you and I will post another reading for you very soon. Hi Aquarius, let's see what the new moon in Gemini is doing for you right now. Okay, you've got the Page of Cups, the Ten of Spears, and the Knight of Cups. Page of Water, Ten of Fire, Knight of Water and the Ace of Fire on the bottom of the deck. With the Game of Thrones Tarot, this is a song of water and fire though. Water, fire, water, fire. Uh, so information about the Game of Thrones Tarot and any decks that you wanna know about that I use down in the description along with information about the music and private readings uh, and my email address, lunaticstarotgmail.com. I'm gonna flip this around to face you in just a second, Aquas, just give me just a beat with it. So it looks as if coming into this space, coming into the energy of the new moon in Gemini Aquarius, there's an offer on the table. A timid, shy, maybe immature, unsure, uncertain offer, but an offer of love nonetheless. With the Ace of Fire on the bottom of the deck, something or someone is simply not ready. This might be a false start. Uh, something not being ready to be birthed into the world, a creation that's not quite ready to be received, given, shared. Yeah, so it's, it's you, Aquarius, or us, I should say. We have... Uh, a loving offer to make but we're uncertain of how to make the offer we're uncertain maybe of what it's worth um, and it may just be a creative expression like I said wanting to offer the uh, wanting to offer um, that creative expression or an express expression of love in some form to the world at large but feeling like you're just not ready yet we're just not ready. The project's not ready. The offer, it's, 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 it's a false start. It's not ready. And we may be toiling away and studying and studying in trying to be ready to make this offer, right? Well, we, but we already have something to offer. And, and I think it might just be our own ego that's keeping us from sharing something with the world that we feel like isn't ready to be birthed. Again, a creative expression perhaps specifically that we feel like isn't ready to be birthed, isn't ready to be shared. Or for some Aquarians, it could be a love offer, a romantic love offer. We're just, we have it. We have this love for this person, but it's just we're timid, we're shy, we're unsure, and we maybe didn't actually make the offer. Or if we did, there's still this energy surrounding it of, of us or them not being ready for it. In any case, at present, currently, we're overwhelmed. It's too much. It's too much to carry. It's too much to handle. We may need to take a little break from dealing with all of what we have on our plate at this time. And ultimately, 
by the time we're moving away from the space with the Knight of Cups upright, I think that someone does make an offer. So whether it's an offer of romantic love or that offer of creative expression to the world, I think ultimately we become ready during this period of um, time when the moon's in Gemini, time surrounding this new moon in Gemini. Wow. Wow. Now it resonates personally. Um, okay, so you had two kings show up as your clarifiers on that Knight of Cups. Um, Knight of Air and a Knight of Fire. Or kings, a King of Air and a King of Fire. We've got the Knight of Cups that it's clarifying. I want one additional piece of advice as well. This is honestly starting to give me a headache. Um, and I think that's how you feel right now, Aquarians. This, whatever situation you're in, I know we haven't uh, covered it all yet, but yeah, I think, it, I think it's giving you a headache and I'm sharing that with you right now. Um, gosh. Well, this is Aquarian energy on the bottom of the deck with the Seven of Swords here. So it can just be a confirmation that this is your reading, that you need to steal time for yourself since you feel so overwhelmed at this time. It doesn't necessarily have to be that there's a sneaky energy around. But if you are dealing with two masculine energies, specifically a, a fire and air masculine energy, or two mature masculine energies that you would associate with fire and air qualities. Like one of them is very passionate and fast acting and social. And the other one is very cerebral and pragmatic and uh, um, logical um, and just, right? Um, then I do think that if you're suspicioning that one of them is sneaking around, not being honest, you're right. So uh, perhaps the message of it being about a creative endeavor of yours that you don't feel ready to share with the world resonates with some of you as well. In which case, I think we moved through that message. It's overwhelming right now to continue to carry it. You thought you'd be ready by now. You thought it would be ready by now. You're not sure if, like I said, it's just your own ego that's making you think you need to learn more before you're ready. Um and there's the, the king of air there as well. And the knight of fire reversed. So it seems um, it seems that if that's the case, though, the creative expression, you're carrying this burden through, but by the time you make it just relatively soon after the new moon in Gemini, you're feeling ready to make that offer after all. You, if you've if that's the case if you've come into this energy feeling I'm not sure if I'm ready I'm not sure if I'm ready but it's getting really heavy to carry you go ahead and make the offer and maybe it is a little premature maybe you've not developed into the artist that you fully want to be eventually yet but you just start you just start doing what you do and then you're someone who does that thing and then you make your next offer and eventually it'll be a king of cups offer where you're you know you're completely expressing what you wanted to just the way you wanted to but you got to just start somewhere for others of you you are dealing with multiple suitors and that is actually i should have just trusted it the first feeling that i got from these two um cups these two offers when they showed up and i mean they flew out of the table so out of the deck onto the table so i think they're two mature masculine energies who are very eager to make an offer so i'm going to read this like you're receiving the offers but if you're one of the masculines making the offer well you know where you fit in right uh, i do think that one of them is being sneaky doesn't necessarily mean there's a third party or a betrayal we don't see indication of that but being sneaky not being completely honest it's someone one of them is at the very least oh, and i see it now <laughs> See his, his his foot forward. One of them, at the very least, is putting their best foot forward at this time. Okay, 
Um, and I think in general, they both want a level of commitment or um, intimacy in some respect or in every respect that, that we're not ready for. So this is why you feel overwhelmed and burdened currently because not only are you receiving multiple offers from multiple suitors this Gemini season and under this Gemini new moon, but there are other things that you'd rather focus on yourself, your passion projects, your purpose, et cetera, et cetera, whatever else is in this bundle of sticks that you're carrying. Um, it's, it's almost as if, <laughs> oh my gosh, isn't it so funny? All right. I'm hearing this message for myself. And when you hear what I'm going to say, you're going to say, how did you not know this was for you? But <laughs> it's crazy how that happens. It, you're feeling as if you have to choose one of these offers from one of these masculines and you just need to choose you. <laughs> the, whole, the whole of the message is that you're not ready to accept either of them. You're not ready to move forward with any level of intimacy with anybody right now besides yourself. You are at the end of a spiritual journey. Now that's going to shake out differently for, for each of you. Some because of a creative project, um, some because of self-developmental work, um, etc. You know, and sometimes those things are all tied up together. It's very beneficial to do self-developmental work through doing creative work, right? So maybe it's all the above for some, but we are at the end of a spiritual journey, um, an impactful, powerful one that is shaping who we are going to be. So no wonder extra offers on the table of love and commitment, especially ones that are too immature to really be uh, I don't want to say taken seriously, but too immature to be um, counting on long term yet, right? Um, gosh, I'm so glad I'm hearing myself say all this. Uh, of course, that's overwhelming. Because what, what, what needs to be, and I'm not saying that anybody needs to be harsh with anybody, but what needs to be said to both of these offers, whatever they are and from whom, whomever they're from, is that it's just not the time. Just how divine timing dictates to all of us and our lives, we can also dictate to everyone else who wants to enter ours. Sometimes we really want something to come to fruition and fate says, ah, 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 it's not time yet. And the only silver lining to the fact that the world and the chaos and the divine and other people can do that to us and can do that to you is that we get the same power. We also get to exercise that power with anybody who wants to come into our life at any particular time or offer us any type of intimacy at any particular time. We get to exercise that wagging finger and say, ah, 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 I'm not ready. And that's what this is about. It's time for us to do that, Aquas, right now. And some of us, it's just the, the creative message that I said first. And if that's the case, you really want to list, listen to the message for the collective that's all the way at the beginning of this session, this recording. I did pull three cards and some clarifiers just for everyone in general. And it really resonates with that message about creative expression. But for the rest, for other Aquas, for others of us, it's both. It's, it's the creative expression that we need to be focusing on is on the table and our hesitation about sharing that is on the table, yes. But we're almost letting it take a back seat to these offers that these people aren't ready to make and we aren't ready to accept. So why would we think that one of these two kings one of these two mature individuals is, is the mature masculine for us. Who says it's either of these people? We just are feeling like that, a lot of us, not everybody, but are feeling like we have to decide on one of these things because the offers are in front of us. We do have to say something to these, these offers, whether verbally or energetically. And again, it's, I'm not ready yet. That's, you know, it's not gonna resonate with everybody my messages normally don't resonate with me as I'm pulling them. Um, there's something special about it being a new moon reading. It's, it's surprising me so much because in a year of this channel, I don't think I've ever 
been realizing how the message applied for me as it was falling out. So um, I, do I definitely don't think it's just for me, but that's just something in general that we're we're running into offers from multiple masculines. So from some of you, if for some of you it's going to be a romantic offer, for some of us it's it's offers from different uh, possible employers, bosses. Uh, for some of us, it's offers uh, from different people as far as um, what we want to study, where we want to live, right? It, it can be different things. It's going to shake out differently, but there's these mature masculines making these immature offers. Um, I, you know, I'm not trying to say they're acting like children, but they're not ready to make us the offers they're making. And we're not, more importantly, most importantly, we're not ready to accept them. Um, and so, yeah, it's just a, it's just a matter of, of stepping up to the plate and saying, I need some time to deal with this. It's, I guess sometimes it's hard to say to people, I'm at the end of a spiritual journey because that's personal. That in and of itself is an intimate exchange. And it's hard to explain that type of thing to people, but gosh, you don't have to. Spiritual reasons. Period. You don't have to explain beyond that. I just can't right now. Spiritual reasons. <laughs> you know, I can't have that drink right now. I can't take that job right now. I can't have that relationship right now. Honestly, spiritual reasons, period, is, is enough of an explanation. And then if you want to give these people because you care about them more of an explanation, of course. But no matter how close somebody is to you in your life, they should respect that reason if you say it goes beyond your boundaries to explain further. I truly believe that. Now I'm kind of rigid about certain things like that. I know that, but they should. Family, friend, or otherwise, they should, they should accept not much more than that as a valid reason if they respect you and they care about you, right? But now I'm just like on a soapbox a little bit, so... I won't do that, but um, yeah, some keep in mind somebody's putting their best foot forward and that you are overwhelmed and not ready for this anyway, and this spiritual journey that you're coming to an end to that's making you feel so overwhelmed really deserves your attention now, as well as any creative project that you're trying to decide if you're ready to share with the world. Now, a lot more wants to be said about this, but we are going to have to leave it at that, Aquas. Uh, you can see the cards want to say more about it. Um, but if you need a private reading from me, just scroll down to the description box again below. LunaticsTarot at gmail.com is my email or all of your links are there. Thank you for all of your support. All of it. Likes, comments, subscribes, orders, all of it. Uh, but also a, a special thank you to those who have been donating. I so appreciate it. It means the world to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I hope you all make wise choices for yourselves moving forward. I love you and I will post another reading for you very soon. Hi Pisces. Let's see what we can expect or really at this point what we're dealing with for Pisces, what Pisceans are dealing with at this new moon in Gemini. And let's put music back on to do so. Okay, Pisces, fish, what is going on for you at this new moon in Gemini? This is for Pisces, sun, moon, rising, uh, Mars, Venus, north node, anything, anything that makes you resonate with Pisces. Uh, chariot reversed, you may have been dealing with a Cancer coming into this time period surrounding the new moon in Gemini. May 2019's new moon in Gemini. What's it offering you, Pisces? So some Pisces have been dealing with a Cancerian energy and you're currently a little lost in fantasy or other modes of escapism because you don't want to deal with missing that Cancer. That's specific for some. Others, though, you've been feeling stuck like you can't move forward. Uh, and that may resonate with you either way, even if that first part was for you too. Um, I 
We've got uh, the Ten of Cups, the Justice card reversed, the Seven of Swords reversed, and the Two of Swords reversed. So I think, you know, there was some injustice I'm feeling going on in your home where you thought you had shared emotional fulfillment with someone. They've actually been found out. They were fibbing about something, to put it mildly, to say the least, right? Um, and, and you're having trouble making a decision. That might be the stuck energy. You're having trouble making a decision about what to do moving forward. You may be, some of you may be choosing, like I said, fantasy, um, substances, escapism in general, um, in order to get away from making that decision. Uh, while others of you, uh, some Pisces, are very much decided on, on what they're going to do about that unjust maybe even outright abusive, in a sense, energy that has been uh, at least near and affecting the home and family life, if not in it and a part of it. But let's see where this is heading. And then I will flip these cards around to face you, Pisces, let you take a look. Um, this is the Game of Thrones tarot that we're using. So information about this deck and any other ones that I like to use in Lunatics Tarot readings can be found down below where you'll also find information about the music and private readings. Yeah, and if that's a divine masculine cancer, uh, I think he's leaving the picture is where this is heading. I think I've got that right for you, right? Yeah. I think he's leaving the picture. If we're talking about a divine masculine energy who's been unjust, unfair, maybe outright, you know, at the extreme end of the spectrum, uh, outright abusive in some sense. Yeah, you're going to go through a mourning period about it and then you're going to be done with it. Uh, cer certainly if it was a cancer, I also see Aries here. Uh, We'll get a few clarifiers. Let's get let's get one to start on the Seven of Cups reverse. Okay. Okay. Well, that inspires some hope, doesn't it? Uh, Star card is speaking of hope specifically. Yeah, I think what we're seeing here, Pisces, is you have to stand up for what you believe in this situation, what you want in your home, what you want from a partner. Now, for some, it is a, it's, it's not a romantic partner, but for a lot of you, it is. Um, it's certainly a partnership where love, you thought love was understood. Um, you, it was a lengthy entanglement, nonetheless, regardless of whether love was understood or not. It was a lengthy entanglement, and it's a lengthy entanglement that you're still tangled up in currently. But like I said, if somebody has been, judging from the other cards that came out, um, unfair to you, uh, dishonest with you, and it's affecting your home and or family life, I think you're going to be done with it. You know what you want. Even if some of you are taking the route of choosing escapism for a little while right now first because you're not ready to push them out of the picture, right? But ultimately, this person who was, was, is a lengthy entanglement, a partner of sorts, and again, that could be a partner at work, a partner in the home, any dishonesty or, or being unfair is affecting that home life, even if they're a business partner, right? And it's hard, regardless of whether it's romantic or business or otherwise, it's hard for you to push this person out of the picture, but ultimately, that's where this is heading, because you do know what you want even if you're trying to escape taking action about it. And I think you know what you want in terms of, of a loving partnership. And if it's a business or work, then at least someone who's loving in the sense of having the same morals, goals, uh, business ethics that you do, right? And I think it, you know, probably for those of you that are avoiding using escapism to avoid... Uh, this taking this action of telling this um telling this dishonest or unfair individual that they they have to step off have to step out of your picture have to you know have to back off at least right um it's probably because it is a lover it's probably because there's love in the connection even though you feel like something they're doing is untrue or unfair and it's also probably because you're trying to avoid going through this mourning period. But the fact is, 
is that this is, if it was, especially if it was a love, a lover, it's a false love, it's an unrequited love. Um, and you may be choosing escapism, if you are, to avoid going within, listening to your own inner wisdom. Um, you want to be careful, depending on what type of escapism it is. It could be fantasy, it could be sugar, it could be um, uh, starting up a new relationship with someone too quick to, to make yourself feel better. Uh, or it could be drugs, alcohol, substances, right? We want to be careful because it looks like avoiding going within, avoiding listening to our own inner wisdom, avoiding that time of meditation and stillness and aloneness, right, um, is... Uh, it's making us mentally unclear, mentally unwell, which could ultimately put us on the same spectrum with, it could lead us to uh, being as dishonest as someone has been with us, right? And we definitely don't want that. I'm not saying that's where everybody's headed. I'm saying the cards are just reminding us that it's a possibility if we continue down that road anyway, right? Um, but this is this is what it's all about here with the five of cups in reverse being on the bottom of the deck. It's telling us that you you are, some of you, again, it's split. Some of you are lingering too long in a morning period or lingering too long in the period before morning because you don't want to go through it. Or, or lingering too long in the period of going through it because you don't want to tell this person to go, especially if it's a lover. Uh, and, and yeah, it's leading to, again, drinking, drugs, or some sort of fantasy and escapism that ultimately is just as unhealthy. It just doesn't seem like it on the surface uh, to a lot of us, right? Um, using anything to avoid our truth uh, for too long, using anything to avoid ourselves, our lives, our reality for too long is going to result in this this confusion, this lack of clarity, lack of honesty, right? I mean, it's, it's synonymous. It's one and the same. It is itself a lack of honesty if we're trying to avoid ourselves, avoid our truth, avoid our reality. Um, but for, again, I, you know, as I said at the very beginning, for a few Pisces, you're on a path where this is actually indicating that you're done with mourning. You've been feeling stuck. You've been knowing about this cancer specifically, maybe for some. Uh, but you, you've been feeling stuck and you know what you want. And it, it is love understood. And it is a lengthy entanglement with someone you have a true deep bond with. And if that means that you have to dismiss this divine masculine from the situation, then so be it. And don't worry because the divine is going to help you heal. It's not a healing that can be rushed. It's not going to be, guys, a morning that can be rushed. No matter what. But the divine's going to help you through it inspecting yourself, knowing thyself, maybe looking into your astrology is going to help you through it. Remembering that what this is about is standing up for what you believe and, and freeing yourself from any limiting beliefs that that is what you deserve, right, is what's going to help you through it. And I know it's not as intense or extreme for some as it is for others. These are on a spectrum, but overall, that's what, that's what we're looking at, Pisces. Going through a period of mourning. And if you've already been through it, then going through the necessary steps to dismiss, I think this this prideful, egoic, masculine energy doesn't necessarily have to be a man, but it is a prideful, egoic, controlling, possibly abusive, just like the just like the justice card showing up in reverse energy. Um, that's making you feel like you don't have choices and options and roads and power and you do. Um I heard, I can't even remember who said it the other day, but I heard a reader say something about it. it's not so much about taking your power back because you always have it. And I liked that. That really resonated with me and stuck with me. And that's how I'm, I've been seeing it as of late now. Um, it's not about some, no one stole your power because no one can take that. But they convinced you to use it for things that the authentic you doesn't want to basically. And you're, you're taking it back in the sense that you're going to direct that power and that energy toward what you want to now. Maybe finding a new loving partner, if it was uh, about a romance or, or even a new uh, business partner, if that's what it was. But certainly to get yourself out of a state of falling into escapism, if that's what's happening. And it really just dawned on me just now that this is a reading for Pisces. So for some of you, that is fairly likely. That's just a Piscean trait. I'm, I'm a Pisces uh, North Node in Midheaven, so, you know, no judgment. It's nothing personal or anything. It's just something I know about, 
um, about your energy. But for some of you, that's just not the case. For some of you, you're post morning period and you're done with it. And this is actually indicating that while you had a lot of options and you were unsure and confused, you certainly know for certain now what you want. Okay, so for some of you, it's that. And for the others, it's just that you're doing the escapism thing for a while to avoid what has to happen. But from my point of view, it's so clear how much better things are for, for the Pisces who are like, I'm not going through the escapism. I'm not my, I know what I want. I know what I need and I'm going to go get it. Um, and you all, the ones who are going through the escapism, you just are just dreading it. You're dreading the morning period. You're dreading the conversation where you dismiss the divine masculine. And, and really the advice here that I can give you is remember that this is about what you believe. This is about directing your power, your magic, your energy toward the things that matter to you. This is about making your decisions for yourself. This is about moving forward in your life. It's about being honest with yourself, being authentic. And don't worry, it doesn't feel like you can handle the whole thing on your own because you can't, but you won't have to. The divine will help. They will replenish your energy. They will give you a resurgence of this confident, youthful energy that you need to power through. Okay, so we're going to leave it at that, Pisces. I know I can leave it in your capable hands moving forward from there. Thank you so much for all of your support, for the likes, comments, subscribes, uh, messages, orders, etc. for all of it. Uh, I so appreciate it all. And a special thank you to all of you who have uh, donated to Lunatics Tarot. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so appreciated. Uh, if you do need a private reading, again, information is down below. Uh, links are there. LunaticsTarot at gmail.com is my email address. And um, I hope you make wise choices for yourselves moving forward, Pisces. I really hope you don't feel boxed in or determined by anything that we've laid out on the table here. Um, and I love you, and I will post another reading for you soon.